here. Let's take a look at Texas Tech's black. It's Lace, Yojo, Epic, Z-Ray, TB, and Skez rounding out the roster right there. Going off the board here. Eggs going ham. El Puppy Loco. Board Creeper guy. Starlington. Or Starling Knit. Excuse me. Uh, Draven Dubs. For reference, the Texas Tech University side are 4-1, and one, so they've had a pretty solid performance here so far in Challenger Cyan, and then of course or Cayenne, I never can get that word right in Teradus. Uh, and then on the other side the Viterbo uh, V-Hawks they are 3-2, and two, so close, close. Uh, a little bit of a favoring here on the Texas side here, uh, if I'm being honest with you, uh, but she's a She's never a bad band. She's definitely one of those operators where you're never unhappy to know that you won't have to run into Black Mirrors. Yeah, um, I think this is kind of one of the only maps other than maybe Clubhouse where it's fairly viable. Um, I mean, obviously she gives a lot of information, but there's a lot more bands that really could be taken. Uh, Solus is one that I, we obviously Attackers didn't see go through. She's been pretty popular um, seeing her, but they decided to keep that alive, um, either to Attackers use for themselves the um, or if they just felt like it wasn't really necessary. Yeah, Solus is an operator these days who is incredibly strong, and I actually think not taking her in a lineup here is doing them a disservice. I mean, the Mute coming in, that Starling Knight right there, I think, playing the Mute, and Mute is obviously a very good, still a good yeah, operator, yeah. right? He brings you some utility with the shotgun. He's got the Nitro Cell. Uh, you know, he's and he can stop drones, but the, the pure kind of just drone destruction power that Solus brings in addition to a very valuable scouting utility to me at least means that she should be a kind of the, the one who gets the prior pick over mute not saying that as a mute main that's somebody who loves playing mute. my most played operator so like i, I acknowledge their sort of soulless supremacy in that role but i can understand why you maybe not bringing them it's it's playoffs if you're not familiar with the op this is not the time that you want to start experimenting i mean i also feel like it could be they want to bring the c4 um you don't have that ability on solace and this isn't really a map, true, or true. this isn't really a site where you need her. Um, so I don't know. We'll see how they uh, what they kind of do. Right now, it looks like they're gonna just go direct into library and run into the gun of both <laughs> my or she's not well my uh, mute and uh, the player sitting on mezzanine right there. If they can't slow them down. I believe that's eggs going ham sitting up there, yeah, on the fen rear. So a, a solid power position. Worth pointing out, by the way, uh, that TTU did actually bring Lace here on the Capital, who is an operator we genuinely don't see an awful lot of and, and never really have. He's very sort of surgical in his application, very much a thinking man's operator and needs a certain strategic perspective to be used correctly. So I'm curious to see what value they get out of the Capital. Also, because they do have a Capital with the diffuser. So so he should be sort of the point uh, to follow up here, whatever sort of entry they make. Yojo, by the way, holding this low ground as Lace gets one on the Claymore. <laughs> and that is an unfortunate pickoff right there because that's going to open it up oh. here for Lace to jump in. Starling Knight comes around the corner, gets one. He will not get the second one. Lace goes back to work. Good cover from Yojo, who's coming up the stairs there towards Library. And El Puppy Loco is way off base, cannot get back. Eggs going ham, tries to get on the action. He won't find it. Another Claymore nearly catches him out eggs going ham going wild living up to the name there dropping off the balcony as El puppy loco comes in here very narrowly survives certain death yojo though picks up eggs going ham and uh puppy loco stuck here probably coming up off of these basement stairs i don't really know how this is necessarily winnable and it isn't tb will get the finish and i'm so sorry i wanted to let you have a chance to say something there in Teradis, <laughs> but it kind of uh they no. kind of kicked it off no. on round number one of their own Core. yeah i was like i was like i'm like listening to you and i look down and lace is planning he's getting that down that was fast yeah um, wild it felt a little weird though because they they lost that first they lost a cover um of i believe it was epic i might be wrong um whoever got traded out right there um by starling knight um but lace just held he didn't have any other cover after that the uh nomad was sitting on the rappel on the top uh, the one player was sitting in basement. He had no cover. He he just stuck it. Which honestly, you gotta you gotta give it to him. You gotta give him a little bit of credit for that. Uh, being willing to put it down, like, hey, we've realized that we've done this really fast play. Uh, we've gone in and just taken uh, full space 
We're able to get this down. I don't have to worry about not having cover because my teammates are starting to walk back. Um, it may take them a second, but the bomb defense hasn't fully really recovered uh, from it just yet. So he got that bomb down, almost got taken out when he tried to jump out that window. I think that definitely would have been a big kill to help them win it because he wouldn't have had to jump outside um, and have to fight his way back in. But he wasn't able to find him, unfortunately. So the um, Finner had to fight back in and it potentially cost him that round right there. Five seconds to go. It did, yeah. And I was going to say I was so uh, sort of, uh, I was going to say something rather negative about Yojo holding that kind of cross angle downstairs in the basement. But in the end, that really worked out because Yojo yeah. was the one who was able to swing back up the stairs and, and provide the cutoff there, yeah. uh, which a little bit unexpected, I think, by Viterbo and certainly uh, worked out in TTU Black's favor. But we're going upstairs now to uh, one of the more sort of uh, difficult sites, I would say. This one yeah. generally gets bandied around is perhaps not even being the you know tertiary site but it's really a personal pick your poison style place uh that's master bedroom and office obviously for reference uh no real players on the low ground here contesting around kitchen this has pretty much been given up in favor of a full court press on the top floor uh which may not actually do for turbo any favors here in teradis because from the looks of it ttu oh. is is pushing in pretty hard from below See if they can't do it. They've already taken full West Main co coverage, so they're gonna potentially try to walk up. Uh, excuse me, to walk up Trophy. They're gonna run into the gun of the uh, board here soon. Uh, TV. Look at see if he can't walk up. He's gonna go ahead and open up the floor. Hasn't found anything yet. Boar's able to walk back, but he gets pushed down. He doesn't have full control of Solar anymore. They're gonna throw that Lion Scan down. If they can't put, continue to push him out, they're gonna walk their way up and soon walk into some guns. Starling Knight here walking around just upstairs. Still, I mean, in a decent position, but the drone work here from TTU Black really putting the pressure on these defenders. There's not going to be many places they can hide, and because they don't really have any vertical control, they're going to be sort of victimized from below. Now, uh, the first kill coming in here on Skez, who will find Starling Knight. Ford Creeper no. guy tries to get one, but he can't get out of the tub. Lace finds him. Skez finds another. Skez holding this cross angle. Might get a third. He does. Ooh. Draven Drubs. Draven Dubs tries to challenge that. And he gets brought down. Then Egg going ham will finish off. TV still a three to one here for the defender. So hard pressed to win this one back. Bomb's gonna go down. So it's all up to Eggs. He's got no time. He's got a player sitting on that window that he's gonna have to fight. But the first one he's gonna have to fight here is gonna be that Ace. Guess is gonna find him for the for the rotate. Excuse me. What a beautiful shot. Coming out from Skez, they're going to find themselves that round. Another solid round yeah. right there for TTU Black. Really putting it together on these attacks here in Teradis. Looking yeah. uh, looking mighty fierce, if we're being honest. Uh, and the Viterbo side getting a little bit bamboozled. Uh, the drone work from TTU Black, I think, is one of the key reasons they've sort of been on the back foot. But the other is just like uh, a lot of space being surrendered by uh, Viterbo early on in the rounds. I mean, I definitely think that uh, they're giving up a lot of space, but I think it's more to talking towards like TTU's ability to cut off angles. We got to see in that first round where uh, we you talked about it a little bit, him cutting off that base and preventing that rotate, um, doing a great job of just setting up there. And then that last one, he set up on that window. He set up on that window uh, and just prevented them from really being able to help out anyone on that side of the map. They couldn't walk from the rotate sitting in closet uh, towards piano. They couldn't walk a player from uh, one site to go walk and help over on solar. It just did a good job. Uh, they know where they need yeah. to set up and they uh, are enabling their entries. You know, if anything, I feel like they got more value than they really should have on the big window cutoff, yeah. if yeah. I'm being honest. Yeah. It's not a bad position to play. And I mean, you will often, you know, see players do that. Uh, but it's uh, not one I think that you should be getting quite that much value out of. Egg go Egg's going ham, by the way, now picking 
picking up the Solus, but the downside of the Solus pickup is that we actually sacrificed the Fenrir, and I genuinely would love to see a lineup where we got both of them, but I think the Solus is a good pick to put somebody out on the Rome, which is what I think uh, the plan was. Board Creeper trying to get an early pick in right there, drops down, sort of hot drops in, but he won't find the kill, and he'll be forced to rotate back over. Eggs going ham deep underneath, and this might be dangerous here in Teradis, because I genuinely think TTU Black have gotten a little bit used to the idea that there aren't a lot of roamers on the Viturbo side. We'll see if it helps him or if it harms him. I mean, TTU's been doing a good job of setting up flanks. Exactly like I said, setting up flanks. Uh, it was, it's like I spoke it into uh, action. Um, but yeah, they, they do a good job of setting up flanks. They don't just, even if they know that no one's walking around, they're still covering their backs, making sure they're not giving up anything. And they're able to find the first one on the board because of that. Doing a good job of just kind of playing off of one another. Agreed, yeah, and they, they're doing a good job here of closing these roamers down. So as much as I said I was a bit worried that they weren't, you know, going to be too aware of the roamers, they clearly are. Uh, Skez here trying to play that cutoff again, really in the hands of TTU Black, or I should say the Turbo, how much they're going to let that dominate their life. Oh, careful there. Careful there. <laughs> Starling Knight <laughs> popping off with a shotgun. Can't blame him. Uh, but in this day and age, you gotta be uh, gotta be careful. Those shotguns hurt hard. Eggs going ham there. Will click the kill from the room. He'll collect one more as well. Pulls the SMG 11 and finds it. But Yojo here jumping back in when he gets Epic Z Ray. That's a mistake and a costly one at that because now it puts him at a two to three. And Skez is hanging on a rappel on the main window. So this is gonna put a lot of pressure here on Yojo to sort of battle their way back to an effective take position on the site. Starling's kind of stuck in a hard position here. He can't really do much to rotate out. He's kind of stuck in this corner. He's got a player sitting on that main window that we've been talking about. And he's got a player sitting inside of bathroom. He's going to fire some shots at the player in bathroom. He knows he's over there. Not able to connect with it just yet. Jojo hears him walking around, walking towards that rotate. He's going to peek it, but he's going to un oh. right at the last second. Well, we don't see off screen. It's Draven nice. finding him. Oh, we know it was. It was a trade. It wasn't even Draven. It was a trade. Him. It was a straight trade. Um, and so it's all up to Skez here. He's going to jump in and get taken out by the smoke. They're going to find themselves round three. That yeah, was rough right there, and yeah. a rough situation for TTU Black to try and play out of. They, they're very unfortunate. I think the, the team kill was really what sort of tipped the scales in favor of Viterbo. Yeah. And Viterbo, by the way, in Teradis, when they actually expanded out there and played that Rome game just a little bit more, I feel like they uh, genuinely did better, right? Like, uh, yeah. we saw some good play coming out there from Eggs going ham, who clearly is a player who wants the, wants the tussle. I mean, we saw him jump out of a window. Uh, to get a kill earlier with a window with a claymore on it, no less. Um, so he definitely wants to tussle. So I think letting him off the leash was a was a good plan there for the Viturbo side. Yeah, I mean, it definitely feels like the Viturbo right now doesn't feel comfortable. Um, you kind of yeah, see it a little bit with the way that they walk around. Uh, they're not too confident. And so once they kind of get into their stride, it can be really dangerous for TT Black. Um, they definitely have the gun skill to uh, hold up with them. I just need to see them be a little bit more comfortable, uh, being willing to make those uh, aggressive plays like we got to see uh, Eggs going ham do last time. And it you know, could uh, be a Viturbo comeback. Ten seconds left. Eggs going ham here on the room one more time. Now on the top floor, Rome. And uh, El Puppy Loco will be playing that bandit yet again off. here, potentially investing in a garage wall defense, and they are. Some teams will forsake the garage wall. That is not going to be the case here uh, for this side. They've also hollowed it out a little bit just to make it a little bit more unpleasant for anyone who decides to drop in. Yojo there planning to claim more on the overlook window. Can't blame him for that. Planning <laughs> two claymores on that window wants to be doubly sure. They do have Skez on the Thermite here in Teradis, so they should have a relatively straightforward beach breach if they can get around uh, sort of any bandit tricking that we might see. See if they can't do it. They're working right now to get that main wall open, and there it goes. They're going to find it open. Only one side, though. going to go ahead and see if they can't open the other one. The electricity may come back in time just to cut it off. No, it doesn't. So it's going to be fully open, but Epic's actually going to find the first one on Eggs Going Ham. Where we've been talking about playing... Uh, 
very good on the Rome game for the most part. Already falling. They're going to see if they can't rush in, getting the red open as well. Because he's going to start opening the other one. And Bodies going to start falling. Epic finding one while they need. Epic's looking for a second one on the flank, but he's going to get taken out by Thorn. TBC if he can't get it. His teammate alive. He's got players holding him down from everywhere. He's going to see if he can't kill his player on West Main, though. Doesn't find him. And he's going to see if he can't get his teammate up. Well, Sterling Knight right there trying to play in. Here comes Board Creeper. Guy swings the quarter, gets two. Epic Z Ray and TB taken down. Skez on the low ground here. I mean, that's a good long angle to hold. This lace pushes in here and might even go for the plant. It's a bold move indeed. They've got a little bit of coverage there, but I doubt it's enough coverage, honestly, for Lace to really do this comfortably. El Puppy Loco, though, gets caught looking in. Here you go. Now you can play a board creeper guy and Starling Knight. Neither of them in a position to really push back on this without getting caught looking. There's exactly one. Exactly. Skez barely picking up the kill on the Starling Knight. They needed that pickup for sure. Board creeper guy now making their way over to the Puser. He's three kills here today will he find another one no he won't lay swings back in and collects that to finish the round i think uh shows a little bit uh towards my my comment earlier about them not feeling comfortable they're kind of just walking around uh like they don't feel safe in the positions that they're currently holding you got it. You got to make your choice. You're either going to move or you're going to hold that position. And it seems like they're kind of just walking back and forth between it. Um, if if the turbo could, you know, fix that, I definitely think they could do a Attackers lot better. Um, but they're just they they're not they're not confident enough to, to be able to hold those angles um, and are just too worried about these long angles that the TTU is setting up. Hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I get exactly what you're saying. And I mean, the long angles, they have genuinely been paying off oh, here yeah. for TTU, I would think, in the in the main. Uh, you know, the one round that Viterbo won, it was really a situation where TTU Black didn't actually have that many long angles to play off of, which is why I think they struggled a little bit more. They just had that one cutoff and they sort of got played around on it. So not to mention the team kill. I mean, that, again, can't overstate that that was a serious issue that sort of turned that round on its head. But back down to the basement we go here puppy loco again on the bandit and it was a good pivot by the way from ttu black not to really engage in any shenanigans around that basement wall to a certain extent they really put a lot of pressure on the wine cellar side yeah. of things in teratus which is what led to their win yeah i really like that uh long angle on the car i don't think i've ever used that before that's pretty cool though um it is a good one yeah i, like I agree uh, but we'll see if they set up anything like this. Like you said, every time that they've won, they've set up some sort of long angle. Um, and that seems to somewhat be their win condition. Something that's not going to help their win condition, though, is TV falling already. The egg's going ham. He uh, fell first last time. Ski's going to fall as well. That's their thermite off the board. going to be up the lace to open up all these walls. And he's only got one more uh, use, and it's going down. They can't open up wine cellar side. They're just going to have to play out of main. Attack they are. Lace has got the opening that they need, at least to a certain extent, but pushing in through the garage door is always a difficult prospect here. And I think they realize that on the TTU black side. That's why we see sort of a shifting of the balance here. Everybody's sort of moving to different positions. Nobody, I think, in particular, wanting to be the first one to step in right there and check that. Oh, that was dangerous there for Epic Z Ray, but he'll throw the nade in. It gets eaten alive right there by the ADS. Out comes another EMP grenade. His lace is going to go for an entry here on the top floor. Draven Doves gets caught looking. An attempted swing by Eggs going ham, but Ace, the winner of that little duel, six and two now on the day as he begins to make his way down the staircase into basement and there's another kill from lace who's just forcing the issue one kill at a time board creeper guy up here but i think lace might be aware the camera flashing right there Attackers and perhaps not because he peels off and goes the opposite direction Ward's gonna go ahead and find him though i believe he walked back up those stairs yojo walking in he's gonna see if he can't clear this one player sitting on site Gonna get the puppy to hold it down. He's gonna get taken out though. So now board's gotta come back on this room. They're looking for him. If they can't find him, bomb's gonna go ahead and start going down here. Epic's gonna start putting it. He hears it. Looking to see if he can't find the person covering it, but they don't wanna hold it. He's gonna find one on the Yojo, and it's all up to Epic's here. He didn't hold that uh plant, and so now he's gotta fight a 1v1 
or try to plant. He's going to try to plant here. I have three seconds, two seconds left, and board swinging, but it's going to be epic swinging first, and he's going to find board, and he's going to take him out and pick up another round for uh, ETU. Well, a good another good win for GTU Black. A very decisive attacking half for them so far. And for Turbo now, really struggling here in Teradus to pull out the four and two, which would be uh, the best they could possibly hope for in this scenario. Not the best you could probably have on Chalet. It does tend to be a little bit defender sided, but we're going to go ahead and see if a Turbo time out right here as they just take stock of the situation. And I genuinely can't blame them for taking that tactical timeout. This is a critical round for them. I'm kind of interested. To, to, I wish I wish we could hear. We could hear what, what's going on behind the uh, behind the scenes uh, with the teams. But if it's my guess, um, they're talking a little bit, probably about the road game. Uh, so far, board has been doing good on holding space uh, on the rest of the map um, and holding his own. But he kind of comes late back on those rotations. He's waiting too long, and even though he's finding a few on the flank, at that point, most of the uh, players sitting on side are dead. Uh, he just needs to speed it up a little bit. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's mostly just been what we've been talking about. The turbo not really feeling too comfortable. Um, it's something you, you get uh, the more you play, you get more comfortable in these areas. Um, but, I mean, in-game itself, there's a few things you can kind of work on to fix. Uh, one thing being... Stop being so antsy. Uh, it's definitely something I've been seeing coming out of a turbo is that they just seem really antsy. Sitting. They don't want to hold their position. Uh, and if maybe they can calm down a little bit, we could uh, see them win this last one. Yeah, I, I mean, again, this is it's close to a must win, I would say, in terms of importance. Good attempt there by Eggs going ham to trace down that final drone, but it eludes. And this is what I was talking about, by the way, earlier in Teradis, how good the Solus is at the drone hunting role. Really uh, a much more aggressive style of drone hunting uh, than you would see coming out of a mute, per se, but uh, it, do, it do work. It do yeah. work. Uh, Puppy Loco here setting up on the top floor yet again. They like this master bedroom site, but my concern, I think, remains that cutoff. They've used Starling Knight uh, a couple of times now to set up that castle barricade on that mid window. Uh, but honestly, every time, basically, uh, whoever's playing, I think it's Skez who plays off of that, has just kind of made his way up there and beat it until it broke, and then they can't really do anything about it. So maybe something uh, a little more proactive needed here on the side of a turbo to prevent that from becoming an issue. Oh, it's already open. <laughs> so that, it doesn't matter. Uh, they do have it already open. Uh, maybe potentially seeing them do a run out. Uh, don't let them be as active right there. Speaking of active, they're already pushing into West Main. They've taken full side of West. Um, board somewhat nearby. Might get cut off here by Epic. Yeah, we'll see about that. Board Creeper guy on the low ground. He's on the first floor. Eggs going ham is coming up from the basement. Both of them. Potentially in the gun sights there of Epic, Z-Ray, and TB. They're both going to rotate the basement rotate right now. As Creeper Guy comes up to go ahead and take the long sight line coming up from Library Stairs. Skez is going to reposition. You can probably guess where he's going to as TB begins ripping up the floor here. Still paying close attention to the potential clapback, though, from below. They learned their lesson from the last time in Teradis. They know the eggs going ham could come up from that staircase and has done so in the past, which I think is what explains just how cautious they're playing that particular angle. But he's actually just going to walk up Fireplace instead. Um, they do still have a player sitting over there that can cut off this uh, rotate. But for the most part, he's still safe and alive. Board's going to find his way back to site. And with only a minute left, they need to start getting active on site. They're going to take Solar side and see if they can't just get their way in. Right now, they've got that long angle that we've been talking about uh, for most of the game. Sitting here on Skez, and we'll see if they're able to make use of it. Smoke coming out from the Viterbo side, or I should say Smoke Canister. I always want to call them Smoke Grenades, but that's not right, of course. TB pushing up now. Evil Z Ray here on the backing. Starling Knight finds TB. Will he get a second one? No, he gets caught reloading by Epic Z Ray, who continues to push forward. Damon Dubs playing a little bit on the backside here, waiting for somebody to come on through. 
Draven Dubs now shifting position over. They may have left a little bit of a vulnerability here that they didn't expect. And of course, Skez now playing that metal window nearly loses his head, nearly loses it again. But Lace is getting the plant down and there's no pushback here from the Viturbo side. That cutoff doing all the work. TTU Black playing another long sight angle. Kez gets two. Draven Dubs and Board Creeper Guy both getting off early here. Or oft, I should say, early here as Puffy Joko just sets up for that long sight line. Eggs going ham on the slow rotate. Off the drone. Catches. Ooh. Yojo off guard. Three members now of TTU Black left as El Puppy Loco steps up and fires. It's Lace, though, who finds Eggs going ham. Great effort Ooh. here by El Puppy Loco to make it work, but unfortunately, Skez too dominant on that mid window sight line right there. And Teradus cuts him down in a 5 1 half here for TTU Black. And a deserved five one half. Honestly, they've been playing really structured. They did. They've been doing a good job of making sure they have all their angles covered. They're preventing uh, Viturbo from just walking, being able to walk around freely around the map. And there's not really a whole lot of uh, holes inside of uh, TTU's attack so far. So they were able to push themselves for that five one half. We'll see if they can keep it up on defense. Um, definitely something that uh, allows players to have more individual freedom. Uh, then attack does attack has a lot more structured um so maybe maybe the, tur the, the turbo will be able to find that structure on the attack or it may just be an uh early map one for ttu black well it might be. I mean, it's hard to see how Viturbo digs their way out of this, but, you know, sometimes the side swap, like you said, being on the offense or whatever, it changes how the way people play. And just because TTU Black was a very convincing attacking side doesn't mean that they'll be a very convincing defensive side. Usually people are better on defense than attack, right? And Terrace is usually the way it goes. Yeah, no. Uh, but it, but yeah, but it's not a it's not a hard and fast rule, and I've definitely seen teams even at the pro level who are more, uh, let's say, attacker friendly than they are on the defense. Suddenly, you put them on the defense, and they they clam up and go weird. But Venturbo <laughs> here playing a pretty interesting attacking composition. Now you've got Starling Knight coming in on the gridlock right there. Eggs going ham is bringing us the capital. Uh, so two again operators that haven't gotten a lot of play time though gridlock has slowly but steadily been creeping up in popularity ever since she got given frag grenades you think with the uh with the next update that they're gonna if she's gonna drop in play rate probably yeah, I mean, when the when the utility of, for, for those of you who aren't necessarily aware, aren't big followers of Rainbow Six Siege, they recently announced uh, some changes to the frag grenade utility to make it a little less strong because it really is the strongest yeah. utility in the game. Um, and I do think that when they make those changes, uh, yeah, probably Gridlock's play will go down again because uh, people she's slow. She's a three armor operator. Yeah. There are other operators who do similar things in terms of the gadget. But that being said, I mean, I do think and I've always said that Gridlock is a pretty solid operator um there's just other operators that do it a little bit better and with the frag grenade that sort of changed but yeah when it goes back i think it'll be the same well, maybe we'll see in uh whenever the update is i forget what actual day it is i think it's like december anyway not important uh how much happened in this one so far uh returbo kind of slow on their attack He's going ham, walking up blue stairs, though. Maybe he's going to catch some people off guard. Yojo sitting at the bottom of blue, and I don't think he hears a sound or he'd let his team know or maybe look down the way. Or nearby, they're going to see if they can clear him out. Eggs, potentially, being able to walk up blue stairs here, being able to take out that player sitting behind. He's going to get the ping. Eggs going for it. He gets them play that player off guard, and Yojo's gone. Lace is going to fall as well. Draven's going to fall, and another one falling to Poppy. Guys, is going to fall too, and it's all up to TB here, sitting in a 1v4. He's going to get flashed out. He's going to get swung on by El Puppy, but he's not going to find him. Starlight, Starling Knight is going to find him instead. That's that gridlock we were talking about. Yeah, good push right there from Starling Knight. And unfortunate there, I think, from the members of TTU Black, you yeah. really cannot give up deaths like on the Ivy stairs. Uh, when you're holding that defensive position, you just can't afford that. The Wamai really has to dominate that spot uh, and somebody can't creep up on you. Easier said than done, I know, but it's a, it's a big no-no uh, in the general sense.
of defending that particular hold. So a good starting attack here for Viterbo. Very aggressive in Teridus. Yeah, um, I mean, it, like I said, it was kind of slow. Um, they did take a while, uh, but they kind of collapsed as soon as they got ready. Um, they did Defenders a good job of slowly working their way backers. towards the site um, and being able to catch some of the players off guard. Like I said, you shouldn't be able to uh, catch a blue player off guard. Someone should be watching it, whether that's someone sitting in mud or someone sitting in closets. Um, but, I mean, kudos to Viter Viterbo. They saw the uh, little hole in PTU's defense, and we'll see if uh, TTU can't uh, patch it. Yeah, I mean, TTU, they have to have learned some sort of lesson from that, right? Like, you, you can't... Uh, you, there are things now that I think they probably realize quite quickly about the Viterbo attack. The aggression, I think, being the key thing. This is good intel gathering, by the way, from Puppy Loco. I actually don't know why he moved that drone off, frankly. Uh, that's a very solid drone spot, and people, despite it being such a solid drone spot in Teridus, um, people don't check it that frequently. So... Uh, Interesting. I, mean, I think that's just uh, goes to show how much experience uh, some people have, even this far into the game. Epics with a super long angle here. They try to jump in trophy. This could be a free kill. Drone's going to go out, and they're going to potentially see it here. Ford currently looking to maybe jump in. A puppy loco is going to throw his drone through. I don't know if he actually spotted Epic at the end of the hallway. I really want to see a jump in here, but I don't think it's going to happen. It does! He's going to find it. Lace is going to find one as well. That's two off the board already by, by, by Turbo. Yeah, that's a great early opening here from TTU Black, finding those two kills. Starling Knight and Draven Dubs, the two victims right there. And that, unfortunately, is going to set back this entire Viterbo attack before it can even really get going. They're going to need a huge play. From someone like Eggs going ham, I think, to really pull this one out of the dumpster. And, uh, that may be not quite as forthcoming as they might like. Or Creeper Guy there playing on that window using those Osa shields to give a little bit of sightline protection. Actually going to put another Osa shield up on it by the looks of it. Not sure I agree with that decision, but Eggs going ham. He is effectively caught in a three-way crossfire, so uh, the options are somewhat limited. He's going to run to this player on blue shares first, but actually, I lied. He's going to find Lace first. Or looking to see if he can't clear this player on Mezzanine, but no dice so far. They're going to have to fight this player on blue shares if they really want to continue. Trying to take the fight to Skez on Mezzanine, but nothing yet. He's got that shield to work off of. It's going ham. He can't find any space in. Osa's going to go ahead and walk her shield up. He's going to get fired off. He's going to have to walk his way back and board. We can't clear off this player on blue shirts. Yeah. Skez here holding a hard position on the shield. Out comes those flash grenades. They will not affect him. The 4-3 to three here set. Board Creeper pushing up, looking for a target. Won't find it. Now the hard push in. Skez ducks out from behind cover and gets one. He will not find the second one. Board Creeper guy finds him right there. Yojo, Epic, Z-Ray, and... TB have all fallen back, so top floor control has effectively been surrendered, but don't let that say that they can't get kills. Epic Z Ray pops out and finds one. He's looking for a second one right here. He needs to drop his gun sight just a little bit. How is that not a headshot? Board Creeper guy has only one tiny sliver of health left. Good aggressive push right there, but it's all in vain as Epic Z Ray finds him again when he approaches the door. And TTU Black is going to approach that match point sitting here on 6-2 to two now. But Turbo can't make these mistakes that they've been making anymore. Obviously, it's only their second attacking round uh, in that last one, but I think uh, TTU Black realized that they, they played a little bit uh, too overconfident in that first one, closed themselves in a little bit, uh, closed off those holes, and... Let my turbo just kind of walk in and force themselves into these weird fights. Um, mm -hmm. They tried to. You you put it at one point. You said it was that triple crossfire, uh, almost a triple crossfire. They uh, they cleared that player bomb. sitting in the library because um, for some reason my turbo decided they just wanted to give up library control. They didn't put anyone on that window. Uh, 
Uh, they just tried to full walk down the hallway, uh, and it just it didn't work out for quite obvious reasons. And now we're sitting on match point here, and Viterbo have only managed to put up two rounds. They're going to have to run it back four in a row if they want to win this out. And that's uh, that's going to be a hefty task. Let's yeah. just put it at that. Uh, probably a task that is going to be a little too difficult here, I think, for Viterbo to pull off. But you never know. TTU Black has definitely shown some weaknesses on the attacking side, so I wouldn't write it off completely. Just that's a hard thing to do. No, yeah, I mean... Uh, they, they obviously are making their mistakes. Uh, we got to see that on that first uh, defense round coming out from them. Or my turbo is just able to uh, abuse that hole that they set up. Um, Eggs going ham, being kind of the main leader of that um, in most of this round so far. He's been making a lot of space for their team, uh, just finding them any holes that they can, or uh, making holes in the attack when they were on their defense half. And so far, it's just kind of been uh, everyone follow the eggs going ham train, and we'll see if we can't win a round off of that. Yeah, certainly they've been trying to capitalize on the setups that eggs going ham has been giving them, and sometimes it's worked, and sometimes it hasn't. Um, worth noting, I think, sort of in the in the gist of it all, that oh, this is a good position here from Lace. No, don't do the run out. You don't need to do that. You can hold him right there, bud. Oh, man. I might have to sacrifice that position now. A little too spicy to hold on to. Don't mind the back up there necessarily, but that does pretty much leave that garage entrance open. Uh, what I was going to say is uh, I kind of have lost my train of thought now, but I, I do think that Exo and Camel Capital has been a solid choice. It's just been not the easiest necessarily to see a wide follow-up on it. Epic Z Ray on a mighty, mighty long sight line might have pulled off at just the wrong moment. Starling Knight is still here in Mud Room, still feeling uncomfortable Changing with the back. idea of pushing out. Definitely knows that their opponent is there just placed on that check down, uh, but can't do much about it. I will watch over us. Starling Knight's going to fall, and another one's going to fall to late. Two bodies off the border ready. They're looking to see if they can't find one of their own. It's Exo and Ham taking a lot of damage. He's down to basically one shot here. The mute is going to swing. He's going to get taken out. He got a little bit too overconfident. Exo and Ham is going to go and find, finish him off. And lace off the board. There's C4 in hand. Four to three, the, sky uh, the score line now. Four to two. Never mind. TB finds Eggs going Ham, who was so very, very low. Puppy Loco and Draven Dubs, the only players left, both of them very far apart from one another, so they are not going to be able to provide much support. Now, Puppy Loco here sitting at the base of the stairs leading to Solaria, trying to figure out what the best play is. 30 seconds left on the clock. Draven Dubs is sending in the Gemini. Less than 30 seconds left. TB finds El Puppy Loco. Draven Dubs, the Dubs, the only member left of Viterbo. Swings on the window. Can't find the kill. Epic Z Ray with the headshot to finish. And TTU Black picks up map number one there over the members of the Viterbo V-Hawks. Many floor holes. Uh, you can set up on uh, practically both sites. Actually, yeah, both sites have uh, uh, full floor holes that you can go through um, sitting on both karaoke and office side. Uh, and so sure you, off the indeed. board makes it hard. Yeah, that's a, it's very valid. And I think taking the Solus off, like I said, I think that was a, a ban that we probably could have expected. And it makes yeah. a lot of sense um, in the grand scheme of things, even just for the anti-drone potential, right? We saw yeah. a lot of Solus being played yesterday, taking drones out. So that's something, or yesterday, uh, at our last map, taking drones out. So keep that in mind as well. Defenders, protect your bombs from being... Yeah, and, uh, as we get started here on Skyscraper. Oh, go so, ahead. And specifically by uh, Eggs Going Ham. Uh, the, yes. the player on their side who was going ham. Uh, That's right. We should just start calling him Eggs because he's going ham. <laughs> the the scariest roamer, <laughs> let's say, on their yeah. side for sure yeah. uh, was Eggs going ham. And he was also the one that was getting the most value out of the Solus in general. Yeah. So, Reloading. good to note. But they're starting on the uh, attack right now, so it doesn't uh, matter too much for the first six rounds at least. See if uh, TQ Black can kind of keep it up and Five finish off the series fast, or if my Turbo is going to take this back in a Attackers hopefully fighting match. 
<sighs> yeah, it's a great opportunity here for Viterbo to roar back into this one. Again, they must feel somewhat confident on Skyscraper or they would not have chosen it. That is the, you know, general logic that goes into choosing maps in a best of three. You win, they yeah, win yeah. their map, you win your map. Uh, that's just how it goes. So you don't pick maps that you don't feel comfortable on as a as a rule. Oh, poor Lace. This <laughs> got stuck right there <laughs> trying to get through that wall. Uh, not exactly perfect uh, in terms of the hole making. I don't know who you blame for that. If the mute had a shotgun or not, I think TV had one as well. So they've all made mistakes. Uh, TV on that Echo, by the way, we didn't talk much about the Yokai drones being in play here, but they are certainly a tool in the toolkit, uh, allowing some very good early scouting right there. But it's Draven Dubs who gets picked off by Lace, playing, I think, out of that floor hole. That's a nasty kill right there. And that's a good floor hole to remember here, folks, for any of you who are forced to play Skyscraper in your ranked Bomb games. Uh, at lower ranks, that will get you kills in Teradis. I almost guarantee it. Yeah. Well, it definitely will. Even at the higher ranks, it will. Um, a lot of people don't like looking up or down. It's, they uh, don't. They like tunnel visioning. And we see it work Murder there. Murder holes. <laughs> Murder holes, indeed. Uh, Epic's going to go ahead and fall off of the rum. He's getting pushed out by that thermite now. Maybe setting up an interesting angle. That Osa that I talked a little bit about during the band phase coming out as well. Or really likes it. Oh. They also like finding one through a window. Epic's gonna get down by Puppy. It's a good play right there. Epic's uh, Z-Ray was so focused on the window defense. He didn't realize that there was a window right next to him. By the time that he realized he had potentially put himself in a dangerous spot, he couldn't fall back any farther. And now he's just forced to bleed out there in the room. Fortunately, Skez is able to pick up an evener almost immediately gets a kill onto Eggs going ham. So that's the Capitao shut down. Skez still has a lot of room to play with right here. Honestly, not a bad position for the Thorn to be in. Looking for somebody to try and I think follow up the kill on to their downed teammate and sure enough they're baiting it out right now Joe Joe trying to fight it out with the SMG 11 recoil getting a little bit better of him as Starling Knight pushes in El Papa Loco finally takes Epic Z Ray out of the equation just took him a little while Lace finds one more shot through the wall and suddenly, Ward Creeper guy is left all alone. His teammates have fallen around him, and he can do nothing but stare through this hole in the wall and kind of wonder where it all went wrong. Ward Creeper guy checking multiple angles. 15, 15 seconds, seconds left on the clock. This one's pretty much done and dusted, unless he has some sort of really impressive body-seeking bullet. Uh, he doesn't, by the looks of it. Six Five seconds, seconds left, left on the clock. <laughs> Ward Creeper guy trying so hard, but it'll be Lace who creeps up and finishes him off. I really hope he doesn't have a uh, body-seeking bullet. We might have to uh, do a little bit of checking if he does, but uh, definitely doesn't. He's not able to find that. And so TTU Black is going to find themselves that first one off, sadly, a repeat round for Viterbo. I was really hoping that potentially the, the new map would help them out, but they still seem very uncomfortable. Uh, they don't... They don't they're, they're still doing the same things where they're not... Uh, pushing in when they need to, finding that space, um, giving up way too much time of them just not 100% being sure of what they want to do. Defenders, you gotta, bombs you gotta stick to your plan. You have that plan. You make it for a reason. You gotta trust it. And right now, Viterbo isn't trusting their plans at all. No, they're not, and it's uh, it's definitely something that they struggle with on that first round, I think, and they, they have a tendency, and it, it's been a bit problematic, where they will box themselves in, yeah. especially at the later stages of the round. That was a good example, so much over towards the kimono area, that they basically just got caught in a trap of their own making, and TTU Black just closed the ring, basically, at that point in time, and sort of forced Viterbo to play into them. Interesting choice by TTU Black, by the way. Uh, Texas Tech uh, bringing the lace on the clash, which is an operator you really don't see all that often. Um, a shield does mean one less gun, but clash is both valuable in her ability to dominate space and to provide a little bit of reconnaissance. Gotta say, as a uh, as a clash main myself here, Corvac, <laughs> I love to see it. I don't love to see it on lace. Um, generally, you put it on a on a player that has a fairly average gun skill, so that they yeah. can still use that pistol. Um, but someone who's like more of a playmaker than anything, um, because they know when they can push in. Putting it on lace, eh? 
I mean, if it works, it works. We'll see what they're able to do. Um, they're going to start pushing their way towards Skez, taking uh, full Geisha control now. Yeah, sure enough, they're sort of shoving their way in right there. They've got another wall to open up, but I don't think it'll be that long for this world. Raven dubs underneath the flash grenades going out right there, or stun grenades, whatever they are. Uh, eggs going ham here, creeping up the back stairs. Good efforts being made across the board here by Viturbo to take as much space as possible. They're also playing it very cautiously, which I, I have to applaud them for. Eggs going ham, sort of the initial point of contact right there. He's going to come around that corner and run face first in a lace on Clash, though, if he's not careful. Sure enough, there is lace, and out goes those electrical charges there from the Clash shield. Clash stacking up two in that part of the corridor, and this position is going to be incredibly hard for lace to hold unless he has some serious backup. Skets, it's brought Ooh. down, but Yojo quickly swings the corner with the SMG 11 and levels it back up. Somehow, Eggs going ham does not find the headshot, but he's just out of range of the shotgun. El Puppy Loco there playing the next spot in the line. Has no idea uh, poor Yojo that he was in some of these gun sites, and he gets brought down. The 3 to 4 coming in. The first frag grenade coming out from Draven Dubs. Lace continuing to hold them back right there, doing the best that a clash can do. Eats a full flash grenade to the face as Epic Z Ray tries to set up for a little bit of cover. They do get El Puppy Loco down, but they are forced to fall back yet again. 45 seconds left on the clock here in Terranus, and they are giving up space, but they are doing it very slow. And another body's gonna fall as Eggs Going Ham is gonna find TV. Lace alive and well holding off that side. Got the guns down, but it's actually gonna be Epic with his guns up. Do we do now? Bodies exposed. all over the board, falling left and right. Go, no, and they're going to see if they can't find their way in. Flash is going to swing and get taken out by Starling. It's all up to Epic here. He's already found himself two out of this 4K that he could potentially go for. Left. Holding the live. Eight seconds left on the board. Obi Loco is about to walk into his gun, and there he finds it. Epic is wow. going to finish that off and get himself a 3K. Epic's Ray, huge gameplay right there. Huge gameplay from the backup gunner in that situation. Played perfectly off of the class shield to get those kills. Can't complain about that at all if you're sitting on the TTU side. That was very well done. Frustrating for Viterbo again. They had such a good start there as well in Teratus. You would have liked to have seen them kind of drive that one home, but uh, just weren't able to secure the key picks and, and just a little too slow overall. Yeah, I mean, Viterbo is really falling to the very linear playstyle right now. Um, what you'll see a lot of teams in higher levels do is start off by Defenders saying, hey, your bombs here's our end game. We want to walk through Dragon. We want to walk through whatever it is. We want to walk up the house stairs. This is, this is our plan for the end of the round. So let's set up for it. Let's get the uh, house single panel open. Um, let's make sure that we have a player sitting on top of the balcony. Uh, so that whenever we get around to it, we can push through. Uh, and then we start our push. Right, Turbo's not really doing that. They're not really setting up for that in play. They're just kind of trying to force their way through it. Um, they're trying to get through the rest of the map until they finally get to the, whatever their in play is. And then making it. Five seconds you can't go. do that. Um, I mean, it's, it's just not going to work like that. Attackers and that's kind of what we're seeing right now from right Turbo. Yeah, I agree. Skipping some steps, basically, yeah. is is, yeah. is part of the issue right here. Um, maybe trying to force the issue a little bit at times, too, when I think the issue doesn't need to be forced. I mean, the truth of the matter is that there's some good gameplay coming out of the turbo, right? There's no oh, doubt yeah. about it. You look at the coordination between El Puppy, Loco, and I believe it was Eggs going ham uh, as they took down one of the defenders at might have been Skez. I, I don't remember who yeah, was playing was mute. Um, took down Skez on the mute. I mean, that was well executed. Genuinely, really well played there for the members of TTU or for the members of a turbo. But, you know, they, they're not able to keep up the consistency. And I think that's what's hurting them a little bit. It yeah, doesn't I mean, help either. I genuinely, sorry, Interitus. I was no, going to say, it genuinely you're doesn't good. help that they have to start on the attack. I, I, it makes it yeah. hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a hard one, regardless. Uh, Skyscraper is, is one of... Probably one of the hardest maps to learn uh, right now in the console. Um, there's just so much depth to the map. Uh, and I don't mean literally with the, how tall it is. Uh, but there is there's a lot to the map. 
Um, and you can't come at it uh, half cooked. And that's how my turbo is doing it right now. I think this, what we're looking at right now, is a good example of that. They just have people walking around. They don't have anyone setting up for uh, late flanks, whether that's uh, opening up Geisha Wall, uh, trying to put on black player on blacktop, whatever whatever you decide as a player, they're not doing it right now. They're just walking through. Um, we're seeing the same linear, linear plays that we've been seeing the last two rounds, and I don't see it going towards my server's favor. TB playing in T-Room now. Sort of the first line of contact here for the defense. Draven Dubs is already taking a pretty fair amount of space. Epic Z Ray is providing a little bit of coverage play here for TB, playing off a shield. But it's TB who finds the first kill. The nine millimeters there, ripping through. TB though will go down almost immediately, and no position for the trade back from Epic Z Ray, whose position is I think going to become untenable very very soon. But it's Skez who gets dropped first. Epic Z Ray still holding here behind these shields. If he's not careful though, he's going to have the entire enemy team pouring down on top of him, and he will fall back. And with him falling back right there, that is the complete surrender of vertical control. But it's taken for Turbo a long time to make this happen 25 seconds now left on the clock draven dubs is playing this very aggressively face peaks the corner epic right who else will find the kill right there the smoke grenade dropping in the flash coming down as well epic has a good angle on this finds eggs going ham multiple flashes coming in the attempted drop but it's lace on the other side who picks it up sterling knight swings in and finds one but with less than three seconds left on the clock he's never going to be able to finish off both of the defenders and another round going in favor of texas tech black And a rough one, to say the least. I mean, this is the, like you said. This is Viterbo's map. This this should be an easy win. Yes. Uh, generally, generally when you do map bans, you set yourself up. I was a little surprised to see that uh, Clubhouse made it through their pick. Um, I think that'd be a lot simpler of one for them to play off of. So I'm a little surprised they didn't take that. Um, but I mean, we're here. We're here on uh, skyscraper and. I'm still scratching my head a little bit. Um, I definitely see like the potential from by Turbo to do it. Um, I mean, obviously we have the individual plays coming out of both Puppy Defenders and uh, Eggs bomb. going ham, setting just this map. But the coordination is still not there, and I want to say that it's because of a lack of understanding the map. But they did the same issues last map on Chalet. That's a map that's been out since, God, what, uh, two years? Yeah, two years now. Yeah. I think we're coming up on the two year mark. Uh, I mean, you you can't you can't make this excuses. There's there's a lot that uh, my turbo needs to kind of look back on uh, in these last few maps, but right now it's gonna come up to individual plays, uh, and I I don't know if it'll be enough. For that. Yeah, no, I don't know if it's going to be enough either, honestly. Eggs going ham now, making his way up. He's got a deep spawn here to come into this. He's got a little bit of teammates right there as well to help him out, but uh, they need to sort of coalesce, I think, as quickly as possible. One of the big issues that they suffered there at the end game of that round was just a timing issue, too, in Teridus. I feel like so much time was burned off the clock by the time that they were finally securing vertical control. We were basically in a spot where they couldn't, you know, simply just couldn't finish the job. They might have if they'd had a little bit more time, but it just wasn't to be. That's a nasty angle that Epic's Ray is playing right there, and he's going to get a kill off of it. Starling Knight not going forward with drone coverage, pays the price in blood, and he'll hold that position again. A fantastic 7-1 scoreline here for Ray on this map. Hard to be upset about that, let's be honest. Draven Dubs pushing forward, hits the Ella Grismont. Or no, gets hit by the Yokai stun. My bad. Another Yokai stun coming in. That's just causing problems right now. TV being a nuisance as Lace is forced to reposition there on the bottom floor. Something we got to see in that last map was uh, them getting stuck on still clearing those roamers. And it's kind of what I'm seeing here as well. They've wasted a minute and a half just by shooting through a single uh, hole in a panel. And they still haven't really recovered from it. They've only lost one body, but they've 
just lost their confidence in it. Board still sitting up on the other side with his shield up, and there's only a minute 20 left. They've still got to work their way through Skez sitting here in drum. They've still got to work through a player sitting on dragon side, and they're just waiting. Tack is in a waiting side. You have to push through. They're going to find the first oh. little lace in what should not have been a kill. He overextended a little bit. But we'll see if uh, they can't pitch off more players overextending. Draven Dubs getting that kill right there. Has to be happy about it. Eggs going ham, running into some fire, somehow surviving despite all those bullets going right for his face. They've got drone coverage on it. Epic Z Ray coming in. Ray looking to add another kill to the tally. Might just find it, honestly. It's not a great position for eggs going camp, but it's Board Creeper Guy who strikes next. Board Creeper Guy creeping forward as Draven Dubs finds one more. It's been a bumper round for Draven Dubs. Draven Dubs pumping fire into the wall, looking for another kill. Won't find it. Less than 30 seconds left on the board. Another kill for Yojo. Board Creeper Guy pushing up, gets caught looking. Nitro Cell out. Too late for that, my friend. Eggs going ham finds Yojo. And now everything on to Ray, who did find that other kill, but he's got to find another one. And Eggs! No! Eggs makes a critical error, but he salvages it for Viterbo. That was nearly an absolute disaster. And he manages to find the kill when they needed it. But, oh, that had to be a little bit scary. <laughs> Some words were exchanged, I'm sure, in the Viterbo chat. <laughs> uh, I absolutely see that happen. and be like, what is going on? What are you doing? Yep. What are you doing? Anyway. Shouldn't run uh, in front of him. That's, uh, frankly, yeah, the issue. No, I mean, I mean, to be fair, I don't know why he's shooting there. Uh, but That's also uh, true. You do not run in front of a teammate. That is that is true. You should be splitting there. You should be Attackers sending one on dragon side and one on drum side. But not what happened. Draven walked into a bullet. It is what it is. Uh, they were able to pick it up in what I said last round. Individual hero plays coming from eggs. It's their only chance of really winning. Um, they don't have the coordination, uh, at least that I haven't seen so far. Um, and I, I don't think it's going to happen coming back out. Uh, it's very rare for a team to spend a map and a half doing something and then miraculously turn it around and go, oh, hey, this is what I need to do. Uh, I'd like to see, obviously, I'd like to see it coming out of for Turbo, uh, but X to doubt so far. Five seconds left before insertion. Uh, there's the setup there from the, uh... oh, no. Oh, okay, that was an enemy drone for a second there. I thought somebody accidentally shot a yokai or something, but now that I see who was doing the shooting, I feel a little bit better. TV uh, on the Echo right there. Supernova in hand, ready to cause some havoc, doing a little bit of hollowing out of the walls there in support of the teammates. They got both of the utility shotguns in play. Yojo a little slow to get that reinforcement down, but does it just in time. Nothing to worry about there as... The Viterbo side begins to expand their way out, and three and one, they're they're caught and fresh off the back of the round win. They're looking to pick up another one, that's for sure. Just doing some standard stuff, setting themselves up, walking around, and nothing so far that has been really hindering by Turbo like the last rounds have kind of shown. See if they can't keep that up. Pick's still looking to see if he can't find the same hole. An interesting one, not uh, when I see too many players use. Um, so we'll see how Viterbo is able to deal with it. So far, it's just been bored walking up, uh, and they got to be careful. He's going to get that shield down, uh, but he could still walk up real close and just ignore the Valk and get a free kill. Need this back. Well, here comes Bored Creeper Guy on the slow advance using Osa as the budget shield operator. First kill has come in. It's Lace who got caught. But still some big guns left alive here for the Texas Tech side. Thinking primarily of Ray. Still very much a free variable out there. Skez trying for a kill. To be fair, any of the members here of the TTU side have really shown their ability to pop off in critical situations, so can't discount any of them. A new hole being opened up right here by Draven Dubs, who uses that as an opportunity to rush. Starling Knight on the bottom floor now, setting up some claymores as Draven Dubs continues to apply pressure. Doesn't have another breaching charge to take down that shield, or this would be a done deal right here, and time starting to run down in a dangerous way. 
here for the members of the Viturbo side as Starling Knight finds a kill on the Yojo. Can they convert this to a round win? Draven Dub steps up and takes TB down two to five with 38 seconds left on the board. They Bob, have to turn this one into a win and they will. Eggs going ham finds Epix Ray. Will they get the final kill here? It's all on to Skez, who's buried over in T-Room. He gets one, flips back on the opposite side. The position increasingly untenable, and it's Starling Knight stepping up and finding the third kill of the round right there. And another win for the Viterbo squad. TTU, I mean, I, I don't know if fatigue is getting to him whatever it may be, but they don't really seem to be the same team we saw in those first three rounds. Um, I definitely felt like round four was obviously just a lot of individual plays coming out of both Draven and Eggs going ham, um, <laughs> other than Eggs going ham, killing Draven. Um, but that last round was just my turbo giving, getting way too much freedom. They killed that first player on Dragon, and there was no answer for it. They didn't have anyone set up. Uh, whether that was supposed to be um, the epics, I believe it was epics playing that uh, Jaeger at the end of the hallway, whatever it may be for that answer, it never came. They were able to use a lot of space off of it, and there wasn't really much that uh, TTU Black did to answer for anything that uh, Viterbo did in that round. Yeah, no, it's true. And Viterbo, I think, doing a really good job of managing their aggression, putting TTU Black on the back foot a lot of times. That compared to the sort of the gun skill that we saw coming out on Chalet, they're just not getting an opportunity to bring their guns to bear, and it's bearing big fruit for the side of Viterbo. And they're going to try and keep that pressure on okay, here, I and I genuinely, you know, hope for Viterbo's sake that they are able to keep TTU Black sort of off kilter. Uh, they're going back to the tea room karaoke site, and that's a bold choice because this has not felt super comfortable for them. No, um, I mean, it may be them trying to catch my turbo off guard. I, I really don't think they need to do that, though. I, I think they just need to play their game. Uh, they need to go back to kind of that structure... Uh, that they that they've been succeeding on so far, uh, and hopefully they'll find it in this one. I think even if they do end up Swapping losing back. this round, to they're gonna swap over to attack, and they definitely feel a lot better on the attack. Um, not something that you hear too much. Yeah, like you said in the last round, not something you hear too much um, from most teams nowadays. Uh, but I mean, that's just how TTU has been playing. They're a very structured team. Um, hopefully they can uh, pick up this one so that they're set to prime to win uh, the attacking half. Well, the turbo looking ready to kill right here. Same trusted lineup. They've essentially been running for multiple rounds. Doing a little bit of intelligence gathering here is Starling Knight, the star of the last attack. Nitro Cell being early deployed right there. This is all good, good, valuable intel. Gives them an idea of where some of these power positions might be. Starling Knight probably not aware how close they just came to death. Lace nearly gets caught looking. The MPX is quite weak in the damage that it does. That's the trade-off for its incredibly high accuracy. So lucky to make it out of that alive. Eggs going ham. Also taking just a nip of damage right there. But nobody's falling just yet. Epix is still close by karaoke. He could prevent anyone from really being able to take control of Geisha. We're going to see Draven walk in, take a lot of damage there. Kind of answering for some of the damage that went towards Lace, but no kills on the board just yet for either side. As they're just wasting time right now. A minute 30 off the board. They're pushing underneath, but they haven't even started to take anything on site. And they're going to have to keep holding them back for another minute 20 if they want to find the drum. Board Creeper guy here playing out of the Kimono Geisha room again. And going ham, finds Lace finally. Fireball there will claim Lace. Draven Dubs finds Kez, and the Viterbo side is heating up here. 
Yojo feeling increased pressure, trying to cover two angles at once. Yojo swings. There's simply too many guns down that hallway for him to realistically deal with. Eggs going ham here on a little bit of commando mission, rolling around for a different angle. Yojo being picked up on cam. FZ Ray getting pushed around here as well, but Ray can't find the kill he was looking for as Yojo is brought down. Ray playing out from behind the bomb chassis, and it's a flawless round for Viterbo all of the sudden. The guns go off, the members of TTU Black drop, and Viterbo pulls out a great win on their attacking half here to sew this up at a 3-3. But here's the thing. They're swapping over to defense now. We've definitely seen uh, Viterbo play a little bit better on the defense. Um, mostly because you can play defense very individually. Obviously, you do need to play as a team. Don't, don't get me wrong. You still got to play off each other. Um, but for the most part, especially on the Rome, it's all about how you can attackers. keep yourself alive. Uh, especially if you're playing solo, which we've been seeing mostly out of uh, Eggs going ham. Whenever he's roaming, uh, whether it's a long side board or just solo roaming it, uh, he's kind of just been playing off of himself. Uh, they haven't been playing too much off of each other, so they've been having to play these individual games. And honestly, that feels like what Eggs wants to do. Um, it seems a little bit like he doesn't trust his teammates too much, um, whether that's just because he feels like they haven't been doing what they should be doing in these games, uh, or if he just is more of an individual player himself. That's where he wants to find himself, is, that, is it being able to take those 1v1s, um, and defense is the place to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. And I mean, this is where things get really scary here for Texas Tech because, oh, 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 oh careful there, Lace. On the glass, no less. Don't want to be a team killing glass. You've got Montaigne and glass in the same lineup. I was going to say, things get a bit difficult here for TTU because Viterbo, again, their map pick right here, they got to feel extra comfy on defense. Usually that's how it goes on maps that you pick, but maybe they're not expecting the wild ride of a Montaigne glass combo attack. I'm deploying a drone. We're going to see if they can. The first one off the board is actually going to be Draven. He's gone. That's Smoke gone as well. They're going to have to find something to take out this Monty. Starling's going to fall as well to Epic. He finds a third on the board. There's only two more players off the board. ETU Black already looking strong in this round by Turbo on their back foot. Being a careful weather eye on how things are going now. Eggs going ham, stepping up here to the wall of karaoke. Waiting for a sight line to open up. El Puppy Loco is holding a pretty solid position, honestly. As the sense comes out, that's going to allow Race Lace to rotate. He's actually going to use the Kiba barrier to his own advantage. El Puppy Loco getting rather frustrated by the sense. That's actually paid huge dividends here so far as Lace just starts pumping holes in the wall. Yojo is going for the plan and going ham, just firing across the top right there, putting down some damage in a random direction. Oh, Nearly gets killed in the tracks. As Epix Ray finds that kill. Puffy Loco, the only one left alive. He's going to be blinded again by another Sens projector. Puffy Loco throws the Nitro Shell at a short dip, and he unfortunately cannot secure the kill. He runs over the tracks as well. The tracks have claimed another victim. It's Ray who swings around the corner and gets him. And that one patch of tracks there responsible for two deaths. And not just was it a flawless round, it was an ace. For epics. I don't know if you were keeping track there, but you got an ace. So I'm pretty sure. I think I was keeping track right. Uh, and yes. that's <laughs> that is uh, that is a great moral victory. I anytime you can get yourself an ace, you you feel like you are the king of the hill, uh, and that's something you want to see out of uh, one of your players, especially who's sitting at 13 and four right now, having a nuclear game. Uh, keeping it, keeping the the rest of his team together. So epic or get, epic raise right now on that gridlock, playing strong. Um, really, not much to say about that last round other than the fact that he was allowed to get three kills off that window, and I believe it was like a minute into the round. 
indeed and you know here's a good opportunity for viterbo to try and get this one back i mean he, he, he again much like what we saw from ttu black on their first defensive half which you know their first defensive round i should say you should be able to pick some things up right in terrorists like yeah. you should be able to pick up some some learning opportunities let's call them that from what is run at you by viterbo uh now the the shoes on the other foot right like the tracks playing out for that angle over towards geisha okay well now you should kind of expect that they're going to try something like that if you're going to play the same site you have to be prepared for that as tv here trying to play a wicked angle up in karaoke and it won't quite work out board creeper guy down on the low might actually be considering some sort of run out i'm not exactly sure what the focus is on that window per se but certainly a dangerous position here for board creeper guy to be in and you just look now at the setup here for the TTU side, and they've got the Montaigne ready for the rush. It's the same strat as last time in Teradis. No big changes on this attack plan. No. I, to be fair, they didn't really get to show it that much. Uh, they got to show a little bit on Blacktop. Um, but for the most part, it was just epic killing everyone. We'll see if it works this time around. They're going to try to push in Blacktop again uh, as soon as they get Lace over there. Uh, Smoke trying to find his canister oh. right now. Uh, he's not able to grab it. He's just going to go ahead and pop it. Um, but they're going to be doing the same thing. Seeing if they can't put a player right there on the window. Walking into Black Drop. Getting that plant down in karaoke. Potentially finding themselves around. But Lace is going to fall first before they can start that out. That's their class. One of their key characters here. Um, and it's going to be up to this Monty to find something. But he's not going to find anything. Ford's going to find one. Draven's going to find one. Draven's going to get down by the Monty, though, but Epic's going to find one as well. Two more bodies left alive, one on the repel and one in sight, and they're separated. They are, and Yojo is essentially gunless. That's the other thing to keep into account right here. He's just a shield at the moment. They need the backup here immediately from Ray, but Ray is a little far ways off. I don't know how this is necessarily salvageable. The way those Azami Kiva barriers have gone up, by the way, though, that actually might cause some more problems for the defense if they can't actually get back in on these kills. Out comes the pistol. Starling Knight trying to find the kills. He can't quite make it work. Ray walking across as Yojo find starling knight and so much for it not being salvageable they might actually be able to get this plant off right here ttu black though they're driving the diffuser what's this swap they're going to use the montane shield as cover board creeper guy comes around and ends going ham with the fancy footwork gets ray and then swings on yocho catches them completely off guard i'm I'm a little speechless. Uh, as as a uh, as a shield main, it definitely feels bad when you are holding that and you watch your teammate die behind you. It's it's not it's not a good look to say the least. No. Um. You you just drop that shield. You gotta you gotta force the pressure of the fight onto him. He has to willingly take the death in order to get that kill. And at that point, it's a one v one. You're playing Monty. That's where you want to be. You don't want to be in that 1v2. Uh, you much less Defenders don't want to get shot your around your shield. Yep. Ooh, that's a rough one. <laughs> yeah, it is a rough one. Definitely a bit of a morale killer for a TTU. I mean, the problem is, right? Um, the problem Not is that you look at the Montane, and the Montane provides a lot of it attacking flexibility there's a lot you oh, can yeah. do with the montane yeah. you might not think that when you look at him at first but there's a lot you can do with him the problem is the more people that die the less valuable the montane becomes right because he does require in order to get the maximum value out of him and pull off a lot of flexible stuff you have to have teammates backing him up and, and there's just nobody backing him up right there so when it comes down to it when the plant goes down they almost would have been maybe better off leaving Drop the montane the as the planner yeah. with the shield facing the back and then you have a cutoff being played by uh, the gridlock. But anyway, speculation and tear to speculation. On to round number nine, Viterbo really putting up a fight of it now. They want to keep this one at a map number three. They want to see Oregon. They do. Viterbo, uh, I was a little skeptical of them at the beginning, I won't lie to you. Uh, they fought back. They were able to bring it to that 3-3 scoreline. 
uh, at the half, and now they're bringing themselves to 4-4, preventing them from being able to take anything. Puppy seeing if he can't get anything off. He, could, he doesn't. Diffuser. He's going to get downed. Draven's going to keep him alive for a little longer while he it takes out Lace, but he's still down. They're going to see if they can't finish him off. Draven's going to fall. His teammate's going to fall as well as Kez picks up two. And they've got the man count even as they're looking to see if they can't clear Starling too. Or Creeper Guy creeping forward right here. Four to three, the the yeah, setup up right there. now. Egg's going ham, looking for a potential run out, but he's a little too slow onto it. He doesn't have a Nitro Cell or anything to play from underneath. His Skez is on their third kill of the round. Poor Creeper Guy trying to shut it down. Ooh. Misses an initial shot, but we'll find Ray on the follow-up first. Two bodies rushing him down, though. Poor Creeper Guy dropped by TB. Egg's going ham now, swinging back in. He's been the clutch player here for so many plays on the Viturbo side. Can he pull it off in deep no he can't surround it on all sides and wing tv who finishes him off and the round goes in favor of ttu felt a little bit better for uh for ttu there it was really linear don't get me wrong um the only thing they opened was main wall jumped in window uh kind of i mean obviously they caught they caught uh by turbo off guard but that wasn't really the the team plays that we usually see coming out of TTU. Um, most of the time, we we see them do these really cool like uh, cutoffs and uh, setting up the trades, whatever it may be. That was can. just pure gun skill. They opened up the wall, able to find. Uh, I believe it was uh, El Puppy on that bandit who tried to uh, vanish trick, but unfortunately got cut off uh, before he could. Uh, and then, who was it? Draven? Yeah, Draven sitting on the, the mute or smoke or whoever he was playing. Um, just kind of trying to keep him alive. But, like I said, it wasn't some miraculous, oh, no. setting up these team plays. It was just guns. That was it. It was just guns. Five seconds to insertion. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it was, and that's just the way it goes sometimes, right? You just force the, uh, and it works out. So, hey, uh, more power to them if that's how they can make it work. And for Turbo, I mean, they're they're hanging in there. Even though that last round, it did feel like TTU, they, they got the early advantage and kind of just pressed it home. Uh, but for Turbo, I don't think we'll be particularly intimidated by that. I, I genuinely think they can swing back into this. Draven Dubs, by the way, playing a wild defensive angle haven't actually seen much of this and i don't necessarily know what to make of it i, I kind of like it but uh if that wall goes down then yeah all that setup is uh, kind of for naught that's exactly what happens here is david draven drubs focus is now on the breach where the smoke canisters are going to be thrown out to potentially delay any attack that'll give viturbo's defense a little bit of time to adjust to changing circumstances as the first grenade comes out from ray and gets destroyed by an ads so we've actually <laughs> seen that happen before we have the second grenade is going to go out and it's also going to get picked up by an ads i don't know if you heard that in the background um but He's going to be able to keep himself alive. Egg's going to see if he can't find something. But Lace is going to be the first one to fall to Draven, who's sitting behind that bar top right now. Still being allowed to be uh, a hindrance to uh, TQ Black. Currently, they're looking to see if they can't clear him out. They think he's in that corner, but he's still behind that bar top. Still strong. He's looking for a second one. Swings wide. Finds Skez down. Or at least hasn't cleared him just yet. He's going to be able to get up has already dealt the damage. And yeah, Draven Dubs playing so aggressively Ooh, with the SMG 11. He gets two in one clip. The headshot there doing all the work, but Ray finding another kill, sneaking in from below. They have to know he's here. TB is so low. Unfortunately, Ray tries to get himself to revive, but it's not going to happen. El Puppy Loco locks it down. TB finds one. TB is very low. That last minute health boost doing a him a little bit of a favor, but it's still a 1v2 with less than a minute left. TB does have case, which is advantageous, but it means nothing. He swings into the sight line of El Puppy Loco go perched on high he will secure that kill in another round for viturbo as they continue to battle neck and neck here with their opponents and we're going back to karaoke i want to see uh i want to see if they they do that same uh thing we got to see 
uh, TTU doing where they had the the hole right there uh, mm-hmm. in the single panel by by bar top, not the bar top inside of office, but the bar top in right. God, what is that room called? Right outside of office, office hallway. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know what I'm talking. About. You know, you know where I'm referring yeah, I know to. What you mean. Bar top. Uh, I'd like to see if they do the same off. thing, or if they maybe kind of bring their own yeah that, that one i don't think it's going to show you that unless one. you have a player there unfortunately uh but that's the one china? i'm talking is it about china right i don't remember sake there's a name for it i don't remember there what is, it is there is a name for it wait we'll, we'll board lounge it's lounge, lounge. Okay. all right whatever i'm not calling it <laughs> anyway whatever not important. Not, not important right outside the office right there um obviously we're seeing them put those uh, reinforcements down there uh, but you got to do something to stop them from being able to take that side of the map. That was yeah, kind of my left. point there. Uh, a yeah. little bit long-winded. But you got to do something. Um, they, the uh, PTU black players, they uh, reinforce it there so they get pulled behind uh, China or what, whatever we're calling it, lounge. Um, I want to see what Viterbo does there. Uh, TDU black has seen a little bit more linear on this map. Uh, so if they can kind of catch them off, that would be a win for them. Yeah, it genuinely could be. Um, again, you have to be able to catch him in that position. TB here opening up that floor hole yet again. TB does love that floor hole. Uh, hasn't actually turned up a kill just yet, but it is making one of the positions in the karaoke tea room a little less viable, and I believe that's the uh, strategic plan there. Eggs going ham, creeping around underneath. Those track stingers already out here. That's going to make the rotate much, much harder because you are going to have to destroy all those. And Lace finds Draven Dubs with the pistol. Are you kidding me? Lace is just going in for the Are plant. It? Why not? Uh, I'm sorry. It's, it's the down. Danger. The plane is down. They've got it 40 is. seconds now. Uh, they're going to have to fight this back. C4 is going to go out, but it's just scarcity to get into the hallway with his glass gun. Holding it right now. Starling and Boar have to fight back at 2v5. But I don't see it happening. Boar's going to get naded out. He's going to lose his zombie to play. He's going to throw one more back. So he can fight off it. But the grenade's going to go out Ooh. again. It's going to find him. And it's all up to Starling here in a 1v5. He's got 18 seconds left. He's getting fired up on by the glass. The shield's going to drop. See if he can't mess with him a little bit. He's not firing just yet. Starling getting shot from everywhere. And he's going to finally be finished off. And TCU is going to find themselves on match point. A nasty rush play there from TTU. You gotta respect that. I don't think we even saw that one coming, to be honest. Here in Teradis, they just sort of whipped that out of yeah. nowhere, yeah. and that was pretty much the ideal execution of that. By the way, it doesn't get much better than that. Uh, and Viterbo will take that time out right now. Uh, not a bad call. They're probably a little, sh a little shaken up, a little rattled by that. Great call, by the way, just in general from TTU Black to pick up on that. So I think. I can't. I can't even remember who I heard say this. Um, talk about it a little bit at the major. Um, obviously, timeouts are used for you to take a second to kind of figure out where you want to do, kind of cut off momentum. But it's also a great morale boost for the other team. You're six five. You force them to waste their timeout. They don't have one for the rest of the game. So even if you lose this round, you still have your own. Um, and you can still kind of take your time. They can't do that anymore. They've wasted, <laughs> they've wasted it on uh, this one. And going into this last round, it may just be the morale boost that TTU needs. It very well might be. I mean, the truth of the matter is you're going back to karaoke tea room and TTU, they're probably going to run it back. I mean, you can already see they've got the Montane pick in here. They've got the glass again. These are the tools by which they made that last attack happen. And if you're sitting on the other side and for turbo, you're putting a lot of trust in some yeah. of these defensive operators to make this happen. A captain is a, is a fine pick, but it would be a very foolish push from TTU if they were not expecting exactly what you're setting up, right? Like, they they have to be expecting that. What are you going to do about the ash in the lower window? What are you going to do about the cutoff from the, uh, the, to the track stingers? I mean, this is do-or-die territory in a playoffs round. This is it. You, you don't get a second chance at this uh, if you're on the Returbo side. So you better be very, very, very confident in your ability to stop this push. And I'm not going to lie to you, Corbick. I don't think that's the answer I would have come up with. Um, you not, got that. You got I that. I would have gone minute. to a different location. 
even if you don't go up to a different location, are uh, just specifically talking about this map, it, your answer for a blacktop push is Captain. Yeah, exactly. No shield, no Wamai, nothing to hold blacktop, uh, or nothing to hold black stairs, I mean. I, I mean, sure, you're putting board down here in sushi, uh, but that's it? That's all you're doing? You yeah. spent a minute to do this? Even a even a even a lesion or something like that yeah, to, to yeah. make this exact attack yeah. a little less viable. But I mean, lace is in. They took a little bit of damage from the mines right there from the EDDs. But already, oh, maybe not. He's going ham. Finds an early kill. That's Ray who's down. So you've lost the tracks. And that is a big loss because that was a major cutoff part of the strategy. Now Eggs going ham is more comfortable sitting here on this staircase, denying them the opportunity to make an entrance. Lace taking some more damage right there. And if they lose the Montane, they lose the map. Skez and Lace both drop perilously low. Eggs going ham is going to continue to hold this. He's now been spotted out. Here comes the pressure for the Montane. The Nitro Cell bouncing off the shield. But the radial damage is enough right there to bring Eggs going ham down. Good effort there by TB. But board Creeper guy jumps in and finishes it off. Skez is super low, and Yojo is just, is uh, not, might not be low on health, but is just as stuck here. Skez is going to force their oh. way forward. They get caught out by the smoke, and it's worked. Oh. It's worked so well. Draven dubs the one who swings and finishes it off, and despite our doom saying, they have done spectacularly well there to hold on to that and force this into overtime. I swear, it's like, you know, it's it's the bane of uh, Caster's existence. You're like talking about <laughs> how like this won't work. This is not the answer, and then it works, and you're like, okay, cool. I guess uh, throw out all of my analysis out the window. I mean, realistically, I, what are you doing, TTU? You have been doing the same push four times in a row, and it's been working for the most part. You just saw that they took a a, a timeout. It took a minute to talk about it. Even if I don't think it was the right answer, don't walk into their trap. You know they took a minute to think about this. Attackers you just got to walk somewhere else. You got to change your game plan. Uh, and I mentioned it two rounds ago. You got to stop with these linear pushes. They're going to be on a attack <laughs> yeah. for this uh, last half, and we'll see if uh, they fix that issue. Yeah, we, we will see. I mean, uh, I, I think that they... Uh... There's definitely things that they could have done differently, probably in that defensive setup. There's, I mean, the the, the loss of that I think is more on TTU Black yeah. than it is on yeah. Viterbo. I mean, obviously Viterbo did a good job, right? Viterbo got the kills. They they held together. You know, they they held their nerve. But I feel like there were decisions that were made on the black side where it was like, oh come on guys, like <laughs> you, you can't be giving that up. You know, yeah, I mean the really aggressive Montane pull into someone with a nitro cell. But anyway, I, I digress. I digress. Uh, because we're in overtime now, and this is this is truly skin of the teeth sort of stuff here for the sides of TTU Black and Viterbo. This is, again, Viterbo's map pick. This is Viterbo with the defensive advantage, right? Like, they have everything they need in their corner right here. The problem is the way that these rounds have been going, TTU goes up, Viterbo catches. TTU goes up, Viterbo yeah. catches. If that happens again in overtime, there is no catch-up on the second round. Yeah. So that's something that they really need to take into account here, even with the defensive advantage. And Starling Knight in lounge, already in a really difficult position right here, because there's not a lot you can do uh, if you get pushed back and you've got three guns facing you on the forward side i definitely agree with the 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 analysis of the turbo being very scrappy being able to kind of keep on the catch up and not being able to keep that up they need to find this round here looking to see if he can't start it off maybe jump in this window come on i know you want to do it Skez is going to be the first one to fall first Oh, he's gonna fall. It's TV. A bomb has Wait. been located. TV shooting? Yeah. I'm not sure exactly how he dropped right there, but Skez is down now. Puffy Loco's position gets blown. He did like that angle before. It previously served him for a round win. It will not do so again. TV trying to fire across right there as Yojo picks up the kill on a Starling Knight. Four to four at the track here. TB swings in, looks right when he should have looked left, and the kill comes fast and furious because El Puffy Loco finds Ray immediately thereafter. Now Yojo Lace holding here on the outside edge. TB is down, but not out. 
out. They're going to have to make an effort to maybe get their fallen comrade back into this. Lace just face-checking their way forward right now. Nearly gets beheaded by some gunfire coming the opposite direction. Lace checking back towards the breach. Please don't shoot your teammate in that situation. He doesn't. Lace shoves his way forward down through the middle area of the map as Board Creeper creeps along here on the top floor. Low health from all of the members of TTU except for Yo Joe. Meanwhile, Viturbo looking very healthy indeed. Eggs going ham gets the kill onto TB, who is already quite down. Yojo nearly loses their head, but here comes Lace on an incising we'll push back. from the other side. Lace finds two and keeps it at the 2 2. Board Creeper Guy narrowly misses the opportunity to secure another kill right here as eggs going ham creeps up the stairs he'll run face first into yojo the drone is thrown here comes eggs no. going ham he sees the planner but he doesn't acknowledge instead he picks up lace and now he still has to win a fight and egg going ham manages to get the trade at the absolute last second and hold it together for for turbo on a razor's edge is this i mean this is for turbo's map i'm finally seeing him alive took him long enough um they're they're definitely playing a lot better together uh the individual plays are still holding them together for the most part um, but we're we are seeing a lot better on the team plays uh we're seeing uh them set up so much better uh they definitely feel a lot more comfortable than they did on the last map um so potentially this could be a via turbos but ttu black is on their defense they feel a lot more comfortable on this they're not uh, doing these weird linear Defenders plays that we didn't get to see the first one. Um, they're just going to be playing their game. They're going to set themselves up. Epic is going to sit in some weird corner and get some kills. Uh, whatever whatever they need to do. Uh, but I am... I, I got to point it out. Lace on the Mozzie. Not something I would have expected. Yeah, I I would agree. Um, I don't think it's a bad pick by any no. stretch, but yeah, it's not yeah, what yeah. I would have expected. They've actually leaned pretty hard into drone denial with this setup because mm -hmm. they have the Mozzie, they have the mute, and then they have the uh, vision blockers. I think that's what they're called uh, coming out of Ray right there as well so all of that combined to really slow down the drone game so clearly uh ttu black is is looking at viturbo and thinking that they are using drone intel and trying to slow their roll on that so we'll see how that comes into play right here viturbo meanwhile they're running basically the same lineup that they ran on most of their attacks the roles have sort of been swept around and you do have starling knight here on the zofia i think that's probably the most significant change from what we saw on the other side, uh, besides the roll swaps. We'll see if uh, the roll swaps really help them out. Eggs going ham. I don't believe, wait, what are you doing, Lace? Oh, wow, uh, Lace, too much, too soon, brother. Uh, I don't know if I'm a big fan of that one. He's gonna go ahead and fall. And getting aggressive, sure, you're getting a potentially getting a kill, but you're down an OT. You cannot lose that body. No, you really can. I mean, that's that's the problem. Those kind of hero plays, they, they're high risk, high reward for a reason. If it worked, it would have been spectacular. But oh, yeah. I don't really think there was a situation in which he would have taken out more than one opponent on that jump. I, I just don't think. And and now you've also lost you've lost a nitro cell, right? You've lost the ability to hold on to, to some more drones and use those as active gathering tools for your side so an unfortunate setback right there and a gift handed to the side of Verturbo that they must make something happen with genuinely you have to make something happen with that TB swinging the yokai around here to help deny some of the area around dragon a lot of pressure being applied to yojo right there the nitro cell from yojo finds a kill so that'll even it back up any error that was made by TTU black is now repaid in full and the yokai Kai shot down in midair. Starling Knight firing a couple of grenades over the top here. Skez holding that second shield. These shields are an absolute bulwark against most of this attack coming out of TTU Black. Or I should say for Turbo. But it sh may just be eggs walking up uh, barbecue stairs and clearing it out. It only does so much if you can't do anything off of it, but he's going to find wow. it first. 
You guys should have won that, but unfortunately he didn't. Draven's gonna find one as well. Epic's trying to hold it together for his team. Clear out eggs holding nearby, but it's not gonna happen. Oh, it's actually gonna be TV staying alive. He's gonna find one, but not find another. By Turbo is gonna find themselves map number two. But Turbo fought so hard for that as well. That was a real, real genuine hard fought victory oh, yeah. right there for the Viturbo side. Otherwise, regardless of whether or not they're bunkering, you could have every single or a team bunkering every single round. You still have to roam clear because of the way that the map works. If you just say, ah, screw it, we're not going to roam clear this round, that's going to be the one round where they put someone on the roam, and one player can mess up your entire push. All they have to do is sit on side that hatch um, in, uh, in, in uh, attic, excuse me, I couldn't think of the word, uh, and just shoot down that hatch or uh, just mess around on the top floor, whatever it is. There's so much that a single player can do on this map that it's very attackers. hard as an attacker to not waste time. Yeah, it is hard to not waste time. And I mean, there are a lot of defensive setups here on Oregon. I mean, if you look at what you're running now in the basement, right, you're extending out to the elbow. This is classic defensive strategy here. This is entirely meant to burn time. The defender falls back and reinforces that wall when it's all said and done. Uh, there is definitely some verticality that needs to be taken into account uh, here as well. Uh, and if you kind of look at the way that this is being set up, it is a very traditional uh, basement defense. It's kind of this way in which it's been played for many, many moons now. I mean, the only operator in this that I would say you would maybe regularly see swapped out is, you know, your Fenrir or I guess your Warden. But the core of it, the Kaid, the Smoke, the, the Jaeger, this is standard stuff. Yeah, I, I mean, if you have a map where, like that last one, where you kind of struggle, just go back to your roots. Play it. Play it normally. Um, and just kind of uh, do your game. Just reset, if anything. Uh, I guess would be the good word for it. Um, but we'll see uh, if... Oh, we're doing a real real quick uh, rehost. Just a little bit of issues. But anyway, like I was saying, uh, you just kind of reset. That's what you got to do. You uh, just reset to whatever you need to do, uh, get back to your game, uh, and on a map like Oregon, you have plenty of time to do it. 4-2 is a pretty regular scoreline here uh, towards the defense. I see a lot of 5-1, um, so even if you lose that first one, it's nothing to call home about. No, it's definitely not, and well, there's the... Uh... There's the rehost coming in, and I think there's. Uh, we've been told by our producer it might mean a side swap, but we, we'll see when it comes through. Uh, and if that's the case, well, that you know everything that I said about how it was favoring <laughs> Texas Tech, well, flip it over, and all of it favors the Turbo. And in critical maps like this, hey, any advantage that you can eke out is is one that you want. Very true. I mean, even if Texas Tech has to swap. Um, I don't think it's going to be horrible for them. Obviously, you want to start on defense, um, but you got to remember, if you start on uh, on defense, then you are most likely starting on attack if you go to overtime. There's very few teams that are willingly going to give up a, a defense overtime. So you're going to yeah. basically go into that second half. You say, second half, I have defense, and overtime, I start on defense. Just huge advantage. Yeah, I agree. And, and, you know, I'd be curious to see how Viterbo plays the defensive side. I mean, their their defense is on Chalet again, and I, I hate to keep hearkening back to Chalet, but I do think in general it is the map that is perhaps has more sort of bearing on how yeah. Oregon is going to go. Skyscraper is a relative aberration, right, in the overall map pool. And I hate to keep hearkening back to, to Chalet, but Viterbo's defenses, they were not particularly snappy on Chalet, right? It, it no. just was not a good look. Um, they they struggled to establish a roam presence, which is something, you know, it took them rounds to get the roam presence off the ground. And, and that's something that uh, you can't have on Oregon. It's a map that 
you need roaming on the defense. You really do uh, to sort of maximize it. And, and on their attacking rounds, when they finally started to get things going, it was a little disjointed. And you, you cannot be disjointed on Oregon either. It really genuinely punishes. I mean, we talk about it as a bread and butter map in Teradis, but it is also a clear thing where if you have problems with fundamentals or you're making mistakes, Oregon will, you know, they will be brought out. Definitely. I mean, you, I know I said a little bit about resetting uh, back to basics, but you got to make sure you have those basics to start off with. Right. Um, e e we're not even at this point, we're not even talking about like gun skill individually. Obviously all these players uh, have gun skills. We saw in the last map, we saw in the first one, uh, just everyone on the board being able to put down kills. Um, it's about fundamentals of knowing how you to play the game on a comp level. Because it's a lot different than ranked. And ranked, you can just be a gunner. You can hit champ, you can hit the highest ranks just by having the best gun skill. Comp's a little different. You're having playing more you're playing more of a team environment. Um and it's it's just not the same uh, kind of level. You have to be sure that you're setting up trades, you're getting your roams down, you're getting your drones on uh on um oh do they on uh Oh my god, my blind mine just blanked on on, on attack, excuse me. Uh sorry. <laughs> oh, I thought I lost That's you a, there for a second. No, 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 my, no uh, go ahead. Just a little bit, just a little bit of a glitch. Uh but yeah, no, I mean you gotta you just gotta make sure you're you're going back to fundamentals and you're playing it correctly. Yeah. Yep, I agree. Uh, you you got to play it correctly, and, and that's where we're at. Uh, taking a little bit of time here for the, the rehost, and we do apologize for that. I know everybody's really excited to see how this map winds up, and obviously we're excited to see how it winds up as well. And, you know, you, you, you look at the, the course of this matchup before, and I think there is one other pertinent thing, which is that, you know, the map that in terror... Uh, Teratus, that's your name. Uh, that is, you are not <laughs> that the is, team in this. I'm not, um, unfortunately. <laughs> you are not. It is It is getting later on uh, both the East Coast and the West Coast right now. So that's, I'll, I'll beg off on that. I'm hungry. I'm eating dinner today. But, um, you know, if you look at the way the Viterbo won Skyscraper, it was, you know, they did well in the overtime, but they did go to overtime. And they were the ones who pushed it into overtime. I, they caught up right yeah. on overtime. And I think that's something that's worth pointing out. Because Texas Tech handled their map very well. Oh, yeah. And Viterbo had to kind of slug it out back and forth to get that map win. They got the win, but it was ugly. And you do kind of wonder, does that have a bearing here as we look ahead to Oregon? I mean, are they going to be forced to kind of uh, slug it out again on Oregon? Or is this something that they can maybe get a little bit more comfort room on? I don't know. Um, I... I, I don't I don't feel like uh this is really a Texas Tech map. Um I know, mm, that's I, know fair. I know that uh definitely it's a it's it's big on the coordination, but after seeing them kind of push that mm -hmm. way through skyscraper, I don't know if it's gonna happen. Um mm. even if it is a map you should know. I I don't know if the structure came out because of uh them just having chosen chalet as their map. Like, hey, this is our map. This is what we're going to practice. This is what we're going to do. It felt more like they were following a game plan that had been pre-made than it was, like, individual uh, IGL calls. And I kind of expect to see the same thing come out of Oregon. Obviously, yeah. we'd like to see both teams at their at their greatest. Um, but just, just from the way that I, I was seeing um, them individually interacting with each other uh, on Skyscraper, I'm a little skeptical. Yeah, I'm a little skeptical as well, and and I think that's fair. And some of the more cutesy strategies, and I mean that's maybe a bit demeaning to call them cutesy strategies, but some of the more like <laughs> yeah. uh, fancy strats or whatever you want to call them that TT were running the rushes and stuff like that, those are going to struggle a little bit more. You can try them on Oregon, but they're not uh, they're not sort of uh, guaranteed to work uh, or as effective overall. So that's something thing to keep in mind there as well uh, as these teams get sort of set in their blocks here uh, for Oregon. The rehost is through. All the bands are staying the same. Everything's staying the same. The only thing that is changing right now in Teradis is we are going to the second floor uh, to start this off. And the sides have swapped. TTU Black, I was burying the lead there a little bit. The TTU Black is bomb. playing on the offense. Turbo is playing on the defense. 
and we'll see if a uh, little bit of our predictions are gonna come true. I know how much players hate to uh, follow my predictions. They love yes. to, to prove me wrong. Uh, did I just see him shoot a Panther battery? Maybe, I think I'm seeing things. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll see if it's true. I mean, I'd love to see uh, the coordination we got to see coming out of Chalet uh, from PGU Black uh, coming into this map. I'd love to see the individual hero plays that really kept the uh, Viturbo alive for most of Skyscraper. But we're at the end of a map. We're at the beginning of map three of the end of a best of three. And fatigue is going to start setting up. It is a big part of this game. It's nothing like a best of five, but it's up there. Yeah. 100%. And uh, you've got eggs going here. Rome, dangerous player. You know, we've seen some very effective gameplay. You know, he was second on the kill board. The last map, uh, Draven Dubs is the one who took it away, but he was, you know, the, by far and away the most deadly uh, player for Viterbo on map number one. So keep an eye on that Fenrir right here. This is also a very aggressive position for Draven Dubs to be playing in on the smoke. He doesn't have a lot of backup here. And if they can secure the armory cutoff, Draven Dubs is not going to be able to escape from this position. I actually think this is maybe a little bit bolder than they really needed to be. And there's that frag grenade rolling in. Now he's going to get through another cutoff line. He actually has to get from Trophy back to safety. At least he has Darling Knight here as cover on this particular section. Lace taking a little bit of damage is in. The smoke grenade's coming out right there. Lace is hiding in the corner as the first Thatcher EMP comes through. Lace steps forward to try and get the Exothermic down, but he's choking on that smoke. Draven Dubs is so very low right now. I don't know if he has the wherewithal to swing again. There will be no tricking. The breach is open. One minute, 30 seconds into the round, and TTU Black has got one of their attacking objectives down. But it's only the first one. They still got to push through. Starling, interesting setup here. You don't see that too often with these zombies there, um, making it so that, that it, they can't just kind of uh, punch their way through or shoot their way through that wall. They're going to have to open it up. Epic's going to be the first in the fall if he gets opened up by a headshot from Starling. Starling looks to see if he can't find a second one. Lace is going to find the first one, though, to answer back for that kill on the Epic. And Draven's off the board. Starling's still dangerous here. Skaz is going to fall from underneath the eggs. They are trying to push their way through into Master. Well, here comes Lace swinging in. TB, though, the one that finds the kill. Lace putting fire onto the stairs. Eggs is down. Eggs going ham is down. So, really, it's just Starling Knight and Board Creeper Guy. Both of them have guns. They can make some damage work. Board Creeper Guy drops, though. So, now everything here onto Starling Knight coming out of Attic engages in a little bit of firefight right there. But the diffuser is down as well. And TTU Black has barnstormed this on round number one. Starling Knight essentially stranded in Attic. The angle is watched and yojo will finish it off and a rough opening round here for viturbo we'll see uh maybe maybe that uh coordination that i was asking for out of ttu black will finally show up we didn't get to see it too much out of the last one um but maybe maybe they've brought it back in this one Especially on a map that uh, is very old. It, this thing has been in... Uh, the rework has been in the map pool since... I God, I don't even know. Probably as long as uh, I've been playing as many bombs as they can. It's something yeah. you got to know. Um, and I think they're trying to prove me wrong about uh, what I was saying about Skyscraper. I, I think they are. And, uh, you know, Viterbo, that was a definitely a rough round, and I said as much. It wasn't a good start for them, but it doesn't mean that this is insurmountable, right, by any stretch of the word. They can definitely bring this one back into the fold. Interesting, by the way, that they've chosen, you know, to, to really lean into this bandit. Uh, I know, I think, why they've chosen to do it, but I, I do kind of wonder if it's the more effective choice, or maybe a Kaid would make a little bit more sense. I mean, theoretically, with the bandit, you can trick, but uh, it's not an easy. Easy site to trick. It's genuinely not. Uh, and, and 
investing resources even into holding the wall is something that teams sometimes don't even do like realistically there are some teams that just forsake that wall assume it's going to be open and then play around it as such so interesting choices we'll see huh. if uh that choice will work oh i think he messed it up he did yeah Oh, that's unfortunate. That'll make it a little bit harder for them to push through. Um, or for him to hold it, excuse me. Not for them to push through. It'd be a little bit easier. Um, but they are still allowing Draven to get very comfortable in that hallway. All you have to do to answer this is open up that window behind him. That's it. Uh, Epic is trying to try to do the same thing. He's going to fall. Please. Open the window behind him. You're giving him way too much freedom. Lace is going to walk in, and speaking Savage. of freedom, he's going to get that kill, and they're going to be able to clear that player off. Lights However, out. like I said, they still lost Epic. It's funny, though. You're, you're just very right in what you were saying, which is that you really only have to open that window behind them. You don't have to do a, a blind rush attack, whatever that was. Oh, no. Starling Knight hitting that Azami Ikiba in the worst place possible right there, so it only gets stuck on the roof, and they're losing some valuable util right there. Eggs going ham, by the way, is trapped underground. He does have Nitro Cell, though, and they do know that he's there. It's whether or not they've identified him or not eggs going ham finds the kill on the lace and he will run back and if they didn't know who it was they should now he'll fall the all the way back to dorms nitro cell still in oh no he's used his nitro cell so both nitro cells are gone here on the side of viturbo but they do have the man advantage on the defense but it's very close health wise it's fairly similar until skez falls he's going to get taken out by el puffy loco Who's gonna fall right after to Yojo? Two players to three, but Eggs is really close to falling as well. They don't have Attackers too much control. One's gonna fall, and then Starling off the board. Eggs underneath, though, is gonna get taken, or is gonna take out uh, TB. Now, Yojo's gotta answer for it. He shows a little bit of his, uh, his shoulder. Doesn't hit him somehow, though. I guess magic bullets curving. Uh, board. Still dangerous over here. See if he can't find this player sitting in default. Egg's going for a flank and he's going to find it. And the turbo is going to find themselves round two. They are going to find themselves round number two, and this is the trading game that we got used to on Skyscraper, perhaps rearing its ugly head here again on Oregon. We'll see. It's, I mean, early days yet. Um, but interesting, nonetheless, to see Viturbo play that much more effectively. Uh, did a better job getting those early kills, a little bit of aggressive play, I think really doing them some serious favors. Y you look back and, and you think about players that, Kind of like Draven, I think it was Draven Dubs who was holding on the smoke right there in the armory hallway. Should not have had as much truck as he did and good capitalization on uh, on the side of Viturbo to, to take advantage of the openings that were being given to them. We're going back down Defenders to the basement now. Or we're going back to the basement now. We saw the defensive setup for TTU Black in the basement, but we'll see a little bit of a change up uh, from the Viturbo side. Though keep in mind the core ingredients that I was talking about. Location of a bomb. They remain the same here uh, for Viturbo that they were for TTU Black. One thing, uh, one thing about this basement that I see a lot of teams do is they just say, "Screw it, we're bunkering." Um, I think it could work for Viturbo. Um, they just got to be very careful about falling up. Ten seconds off each remaining. Other. One thing with the bunker strat that you have to be careful of is you cannot walk into each other. You have to be able to play very close and they're closing off the 90 okay yeah that's a that's a choice uh, i mean not everybody is. will do that not everybody will do that but that what that is going to do is it's going to enable this rush an awful lot um, if that's what they choose to run with people like lace have a lot more room to work now uh and he'll come straight in right here but this is a hard this is a hard fight right here because he's got multiple angles to cover yojo finding a pick though actually taking well advantage of what lace was offering and lace is just going to chase up those stairs no. onto the warden he doesn't get the kill he pulls out the pistol but he gets the shield back up just in time a wild bit of play from lace right there and yojo continues to just saw away with that dmr david jobs very 
very low on the health right now. There was an opportunity for Board Creeper Guy to come back in, but he gets shredded on the staircase. And Draven Dub, the only one left alive, smowing, throwing smoke grenades in vain as the plant goes down. There's only 17 rounds in that SMG 11. He's going to need all of them to win this out because he's in a 5v1. One's gonna fall as Blitz gets taken off the board. Diffuser goes down and the Graves has no timer to work with, but Yojo does. He's gonna find it. They're gonna find themselves around and they're gonna show why you do not close off 90. You enable plays like that. You can't... <sighs> you cannot close off 90. The biggest thing with, with that one is if anything, even if you're not getting the kill, you're not applying that pressure. It's an early warning system. Like, hey, they're on their way. They're coming. And not only did they have it close off, they didn't even have headholds to start with. They had no one holding over there. A lot of questionable decisions on that uh, Viterbo defense. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, it, it was uh, a situation of their own making right there. And the reason that the turbo, or I should say TCU strategy went as far as it did was 100% because the turbo enabled it by their site prep in particular. Uh, and also just by the way that they played that kind of defensively, they, they really played into what Texas Tech wanted them to do. The question now, of course, is how much do you learn from that? And, and how much does Texas Tech change? Because you can already see on their attacking operators, they are not running the blitz again. They are smart enough or let's say have the wherewithal to recognize that you cannot pull that stunt one more time uh, and, and, and see success from it. But Turbo on the other side, I mean, they're keeping some of the core ingredients, but they have made some shifts. Board Creeper Guy in particular, I think the one that's noticeable, coming out with the cap in again, which has sort of been a, real, a, a sort of fallback pick for the Turbo. We saw it on Skyscraper as well. We'll see if it'll work. I'm not the biggest fan of it. Um, it looks like they're still going to be closing off Bunker as well. Uh, Bunker 90, excuse me. Uh, they do have the head holes this time. They have a player sitting on top of it. Um, but it, you got you, you can't just have a pillar player. you got to have someone to waste a little bit of time on that blue uh, corner so they can't just walk up. This and do this. Do exactly what I'm staring at happening. Uh, Yojo's just walking up. He may take damage from Board Creeper, who is just laying down right now. Uh, they're doubling up on Taylor. I'm gonna go ahead and open up Blue 90. And the action's about to start as they're getting ready to just push it. Now, oh, Board Creeper guy on the cap kit, hoping, I think, to be the delayer. TB there firing down the stairs. Lace gets one, but Yojo is dropped on the other side. Skez is down as well, so technically it's a 4v3. TB taking a ton of damage here as they run down the stairs. Egg going ham, though, trying to keep it open. Egg's going ham, dropping in from above the people's elbow right there with the MP5. He'll get three at the end of all of that. And the trading of rounds is back and in full swing here on Oregon. Um, hmm. That was a that was an interesting one, to say at least, Corbeck. I mean, they we had we had them just walk in and not put a player on tower, not attempt to open up the hatch. Uh, they got blue ninety open, but they didn't put a body over there. Mm -hmm. They just kept walking up into Tiller. I mean, oh, I need the coordination from Map One Chalet back. I I need it. Attack I want to I want to see it come from TTU. I, I don't want to see them do this kind of stuff where they're just trying to walk in and use individual gun skills. Like, don't get me wrong. These are all players who are uh, incredibly uh, good at the game, uh, gun skill wise. But where is that coordination you saw from Map One? I haven't seen it since Map Two. It hasn't really been there. It almost feels a little fake. I'm not gonna lie to you, Corbett. I was talking a little bit about it uh, earlier when we were on that break. Of it felt almost like it was a game plan that was pre-made, and the more I'm seeing these maps, remaining. The more I'm really agreeing with that. Mm. Yeah, I, that's fair. I, I I can totally see where you're coming from on that. To, to be quite honest, and. Looking at how this round is stacking up again, right? We're going back up to a site that Viterbo likes, 
right? They, they enjoyed, I think, or they, they enjoyed. They, they had a good round here. I mean, Texas Tech had a good round here as well. So this one's kind of in the mix. But, I mean, I think we're going to get to the point where basically all bomb sites are going to be in the mix. And if the trading continues, I'll be genuinely surprised if we ever see a tertiary bomb site. Theoretically, uh, we probably won't, right, if they just keep going back and forth. Starling Knight, by the way, is uh, alone down here uh, in classroom. Might have actually been Miss Drone. Frankly, I, I don't know. I saw the drone going in from, I believe it was Skez, but they didn't run one into that classroom, which would be a hell of an error for Texas Tech to make, considering that last time they had to fight eggs going ham out of that space. It doesn't matter, though. Starling Knight is caught looking, and now Starling Knight in a bit of an unfun position, swinging on less than half health, just going for it. All right, I got to admire the gumption right there. As eggs going ham is looking for a run out, Starling Knight is finally gunned down by Ray and TCU Black, they will start with that one kill advantage, but he's going to get evened up in just a second if Skez isn't paying attention. We'll see, but they've gone ahead and gotten that main wall open. Oh. Eggs could have been dangerous on the other side, but so far, he hasn't been able to make much damage yet. I'll be going to be holding this uh, opening right there. I think it's top of white stairs, but... Oh, wait, are we seeing a somewhat of a split push coming out of TPU? Are we going to see TV on the window? He's going to be able to take out board guy. That's the uh, kids open now. Graven's nearby, but Eggs is going to find one on the Skez on that point. He's going to keep alive. Oh, He's no. going to have to be careful with these stairs. Throws his C4 out and runs away. Doesn't get caught off guard. Epic wasn't able to find him. They are still down on the man count. They are still hunting, too. I mean, to be fair to Eggs going ham, he's causing all sorts of problems by just running around right there and applying pressure to the backside of the Texas Tech's push. They are not being able to, they are not being loud, I should say, to push up here on the defenders that they need to. Draven Doves, in particular, these smoke grenades have been absolutely killer to the momentum of this push. Epic Epic's Ray coming in on the other side now cooks the frag. This should do it. Draven Doves is already dead, though. Eggs going ham still below. Eggs going ham, trying to come up the armory stairs, but that's that's just not going to work. Ray is clocked into it almost immediately, and Yojo challenges El Puppy Loco for the final kill as the plant goes down, and Texas Tech goes up in the round count. If I'm Texas Tech here, uh, I want to say take a pause, but like, you know what? You know what? You're up three rounds. You're on. You're an attack. It's not horrible. Like I'm gonna be wrong. I really am not a fan of uh, Texas Tech right now. I, I mean, I'm really not a fan of either of these teams right now. Uh, they're both kind of just getting by on individual plays. And sure, it looks cool for the camera, but it's very easy. Uh, even if you are individually worse as a player, Attackers to just to set, step up as a as team and say, hey. Can. Let's set up every single fight as a as a trade. If we <laughs> win any of these fights without taking the trade, we win the round. And yeah, I'm not seeing it on either side. Yeah, no, I, I agree 100%. I mean, you, you, you're you looking at it and, and the way that it's going here for Viterbo, uh, what happened to them is they, they just genuinely did not account for the two split push. I, mean, I just don't think that they had a good plan for how they were going to deal with it. And as much of a havoc as Eggs and going ham was causing by running around underneath Interitus, uh, he wasn't really contributing to to stopping the, the kind of backside of that push, right? Yeah. Like the multiple angles. He was just holding up one angle. And I'll give him credit because he was doing a really good job about it, but like he just ran out of runway eventually. There comes a point where like, what are you going to do? You, you can't get any more kills, so you have to throw up the armory stairs. And there's a player waiting for you, because of course there's a player waiting for you. Yeah, I mean, we I, there was actually two players waiting for yeah. uh, them. And they're finally going to start their actual droning. This time making sure that they're going to be droning classroom, clearing that C4, uh, preventing them from getting a free kill. And, oh, I really thought, wait, no. I really thought they were going to full show there. I was I was ready to see Starling get a uh, opening kill on the Thermite, but he's going to be able to get that wall open. And now, 
We have a player stuck inside of this corner. It's Bandit. Yeah, Puppy Loco is basically trapped here unless somebody swings in to try and help him, and that's a very risky strategy. Lace, though, gonna give that angle up. Yojo should theoretically replace him. Lace just is getting so aggressive on that. And Lace will find the kill with the pistol as Ray steps up to try and maybe catch the Attic player out of position as well. It doesn't quite work out, but you gotta admire the pure gumption of this as Egg's going ham trying to repeat the trick from the last round gets absolutely slaughtered through a hole in the floor. Starling Knight has fallen deep back into Attic. Draven Dubs is not in a great position either, but Starling Knight will find the kill under the wounded lakes. Ray nearly gets taken out, but there's the last Attic player down. The attempt to swing over and pick it up by board Creeper Guy ends in disaster. It's all under Draven Dubs. He finds one, but Yojo again coming out of the closet breach shuts that down, and TTU, they will go up two now. The round trading broke at least temporarily i mean even if viterbo round trades for the rest of it they've lost the advantage this is a defense-sided map we said it a bunch of times um you can fight as much as you want on the attack the defense all they have to do is sit inside of sight you do not have to show any presence yeah. on the rest of the map uh you can put one per person walking uh, up the stairs uh, and potentially showing a little bit of presence, but they're going to have to drone clear it regardless. And uh, if we've seen the rest of the maps, anything they've been like, Viterbo loves to waste time. I don't see this going good for them. Yeah, Viterbo taking the time out right here. I mean, I think this is a fair choice for them. I like they've just kind of lost the rhythm that they were in, which is why I think that they were taking they're taking this time out. I think they also needed to cook up a strategy for going back down to laundry supply, which might have been why they did this. And I'm very, you know, it's very good for Viterbo that they're going down to laundry supply because the top floor was not doing them any favors, right? The the strategy was too set in stone and Texas Tech had really figured it out in Teridus. Yep, but we'll Defense see if uh, I Turbo can uh, figure out TTU's defense. See if they've uh, brought anything interesting. One thing I'd like to note, they are actually playing 90. They are uh, going to be using it. Something that we didn't see coming out of Turbo. We talked about a little bit of how important it is, not only as like being able to prevent them from being able to walk up, but an early warning system. Yeah, 100%. I mean, you look at uh, the the way in which Viterbo is playing this. Uh, I'm sorry, we're on the side swap. What am I talking about? I was saying the whole thing about them going down to... That's okay. No, no, it's, it's fine. It's, it's, it's getting late. It's getting late. Uh, that's, that's on me, and I apologize. But you look at TTU Black and the way that they're playing this, right, on the basement defense. Um, and I actually really uh, think this is a solid way for them to approach this. I don't actually like that Fenrir mine. I'm going to say that right now and contradict myself a little bit that's too easy to destroy but um i, I like the, the setup and what they're going for here they've got the elbow extension which is the important thing that was lacking on the viterbo side the thing that viterbo has now had with that timeout is a goodly amount of time i think to sit and talk amongst themselves about improvements that they need to make they might not have attack specific improvements right but they do have an idea if there are like communication issues if there are trade issues if they felt like things have not been fully connecting when they want them to they've had time to rework that in Teridus, and I, I think that's very beneficial for them going into this attacking half speaking of the attacking half they're going to start this up lacing if you can't slow them down I'm not sure if I really want to see Lace here. I mean, don't get me wrong, individually as a player, I'd love to see him here. But he's playing Smoke. He's one of the most important operators for late game, uh, both using that shotgun. Never mind. He doesn't oh, no. care. He's just going to swing and take it. And so... Walk back. What? No answer. What? Okay, but realistically, why did they run... <laughs> <laughs> the smoke all the way over from the I don't elbow I don't to know. hold the stairs. That's such a weird Something thing nice. to do. Whatever. Anyway, I don't even be that in a mean way. That's just genuinely a weird thing to do. <laughs> anyway, it's it works. It's a play. It is a play. 
<laughs> it worked. Anyway, uh, looking looking back to, to what's going on right here, they've getting some hatches open. This is good work here for Viterbo. I mean, they are down a player, which is a little shame, uh, but it, it's not in irrecoverable. Eggs going ham, checking down towards bunker. I don't think he really should expect anyone to come that direction. But honestly, Texas Tech just turtled up right now in Teradus. They are just not moving from these positions. I don't think a single Texas Tech player has moved more than a couple of inches this entire time time being frag grenade no go sailing no. right right by and what? so they will continue to hold the fire coming in here is a potential cutoff but what do you follow up on this way well they got to clear this player real close uh, yeah, no. but first they're gonna have to clear tv holding nearby egg going ham runs directly to a finger of mine he's gonna get blinded and yojo's gonna find him yojo's finding a second one these fingers wow. have been making a menace on both the uh, bunker open uh, right there on the other side of the thing. Yeah, okay, I was going to say, uh, where is that Fender mine? I want to know. <laughs> I want to know it's for a future railing. game on Oregon where to put that because that thing not is really. wicked. That is absolutely stuffed. The Viterbo stairs push that one Fender mine. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is, by the way, why Fender is one of the strongest defensive operators in the game. Because so in almost every do. single death in Teradis, there was mm -hmm. a F not dread mine mm -hmm. involved. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of a better one you can actually do for, for your ranked games, Corvic. Uh, so yeah. where he had it is, Shoot. so you know how the railing goes down? Yeah. He had it on that part right at the top. Okay. Right, yeah. right that first step. You actually put it uh, on the one going, Attackers need to I don't know how to describe this very well. Uh, but the railing on the other side that, that comes on the stairs going down. Sure. But on the rail, on the side where uh, you walk down the stairs. Ah, okay. Yeah, no, so I like know what you're high, saying. High in that corner. Yeah. Just dead against the corner. It's it nasty. still hits that back wall. But it's so yeah, high that nasty. You, you were aimed dead up instead of down the stairs where you yeah, should be aimed. That, that's, that's good. That's good play. Thank you, Observer, for cool. showing us the spot as well. Yes. There yeah, you go. No, 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 so... no, a little down, a little down, like on the bottom railing thing. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, but you get, you get my Fender point. Tech. You get my Fender point. Tech, for those of you at home who tuned into this grand finals. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> TTU Black not here. Good, I won't forget that because I play a lot of Fenrir in like, you know, quick match or ranked or whatever it's called, uh, you know, these days. So I like a good Fenrir. He's so strong if you can use him. Uh, and he's being used here by Texas Tech to, to great avail. Lace coming in on the Legion as well. I think that's a very solid pick for sort of countering a lot of what Viterbo wants to do, the aggressive pushes that they seem to favor. Um, and honestly, these defenses from Texas Tech, or that defense on the last round and this one as well, these are looking uh, pretty difficult to crack. Uh, this is definitely putting a lot of pressure on the Viterbo side to figure out how best to get around these things. And we'll see if they can. I mean, they, they not only have to worry about that, but they also have to worry about... Um, some of these roners who, who are sitting on top of a drone right now. Attackers have located a bomb. I Swapping max. Guess they're not going to do anything about it. Okay, never mind. Um, the drone, the drone is pretty useless if you're not going to actually use it um, to find a kill. Epic's still being able to be alive and well inside of that near the sandbags inside of meeting. And he's got a player nearby. Lace is going to be able to help him out. They're going to have a hard time pushing them out, and we'll see if they can. They are, and they're really emphasizing the big tower take here. But the problem is, what's going to end up happening is they're going to throw so many resources over to this attic side that they're not going to have any other tools to use. The problem is the attic, for what it's worth, is genuinely a, a kill corridor. That's what it is. It's what it's set yeah. up as. And once you kind of get funneled into it, unless you immediately take down the player who's at the end of the corridor and prevent reinforcement, which they don't have a means of doing, you're just going to be sending bodies into the meat grinder and that's going to be problematic here because you're stacking up four members of your team now looking into this attic that's a lot of bodies and firepower to send in this direction as it'll be uh el puppy loco who comes forward first good kill though broad creeper guy i mean our board creeper guy i was talking about it the other side this is kind of what we saw similar to the to the issue that they were having with uh draven dubs holding that position but draven dubs speaking of he's just gonna go ahead and jump straight in 
He literally will just aggro here. So the attic is opened up. Not in the way you would expect, but it is opened up in Teratus. And it's just going to be people falling as they're just going to find it. All the bodies coming out now um, from uh, the players of Vitero. Or not Viterbo, excuse me, um, of TTU. And they're going to, Viterbo, Viterbo is going to find themselves around in what was just a slug fest. <laughs> I mean, that was a wild one. If you had yeah, told me yeah. that the, the way that was going to go was it was going to be uh, allowing your players to move through Attic by having Draven Dubs jump the window and just bull rush on an Ash. <laughs> I don't yeah. know that I would have believed you. I was, you know, all busy explaining the technical intricacies of taking that site, and the turbo just goes full body. brute force, and it works. Uh, and I mean, they even got the cutoff on the armoring stairs, which is, was the thing that Draven Dubs got. Could could had so much truck because they weren't shutting him down in that spot. Uh, the turbo's like, oh no, 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 we know how that works. We're not letting anyone <laughs> set up there, uh, and they got the kill right away. So yeah. wild around for the turbo. And I mean, Bob, if you were starting to think that at five and two, the turbo had been buried, uh, I think that's the wrong assumption to make in Teradis. They are still deadly. They've still got fans. Yeah. No, I mean, they're. I, I said in the last match, they're, they're a uh, team that's scrappy. They're still going to fight for it regardless how far they are down. Um, we got to see a little bit of it in Cafe, or in Chalet, not Cafe. Um, but, I mean, objective is to defuse a bomb. it's still Oregon. It's still TTU Black on the defense. They're still in the disadvantage, down two rounds. It's going to be a tough fight back for Viterbo. Um, they're going to have to fight for every single round, and they can't give up too many mistakes. Yeah, 100, 100%. And, uh, you know, ooh. Oh, no. Draven Dubs getting clipped early on right there. Got to admire the aggression. I mean, we are onto a tertiary bomb site, truth be told, uh, which should provide some good opportunities here for Viterbo to potentially make this a 5 4. I mean, if they're going to do it on a round, they're going to do it here, right? Like, that's that's the most likely thing that you can say about any sort of uh, tertiary bomb site. Uh, it's just that the actual doing of the deed is uh, more complicated than you would think lace yeah. on the wandering roam here oh my lord what was that lace how did you pull that off that whip back was insane even eggs going ham is admitting that that was a nice shot i thought for sure lace was gonna get clapped right there in terrorist that they had walked in and looked the wrong way and okay okay lace was a little maybe a little high on their own supply <laughs> after that one but can you blame them no, no, you can't. I mean, that was a beautiful shot coming out from him. Uh, and unfortunate for Eggs going ham, but they were able to find him back. Well, you can't get too confident. Uh, they're going to see if they can't open up this hatch as Skez is going to re strike this open. Not fast enough, though. The wall is going to go down. It's going to get electrified right after. And it's already open. Epic is finding one opening into Starling's head. Skez is going to swing to see if he can't find one of his own, but Poppy's going to find him. That's the player that's playing out of the attic. There's one underneath that's going to slow them down, though, and they're going to have to find him if they want to push the rest of these players outside. They are in TB now sneaking kind of in here looking for an easy kill, but it's Ray who's the sneakiest one of them all. That said, Draven Doves comes creeping in behind and the combined firepower of him and El Puppy Loco managed to take down Ray. That just leaves two team members on either side, but a lot of vertical destruction still in the hands of the members of Viterbo. It's just how much are you willing to gamble? You cannot drop that hatch if you are Draven Doves. You simply do not have enough health so the two of them are going to push downstairs together and i like this cooperation i like this teamwork this is very much a do or die situation the bulletproof can picking them up but they will find the yokai there's castle barricades there's goo mines there's so much in the way of success there's that bulletproof camera providing them with information the entire time and yojo with a nasty sight line here as well and the slow rolling push here from the members of it turbo doesn't pay off draven dubs is caught el puppy loco can go for the plant but he's on camera all they need to do is stop him and texas tech move on to match and map point 
That's a big thing. We talked a, a lot, in the, especially in that last map, about Verturbo just wasting time. That's what they did that entire route. They found the kills that they wanted, um, being able to get that, that opening pick, uh, and then, you know, looking to see if they couldn't find more, but they got slowed down. They got that hatch open, or they got the wall open in attic and had to try to fight through that hatch. Gave up on it, decided, uh, let's find another game plan. Um, finally switched through, <laughs> and it was able to take upstairs. But at that point, you've got 30 seconds left on the board. You can't drop hatch like you said. She, she did not have enough health. That Ash drops hatch. I, she may have had like one HP if she doesn't die uh, as soon as she drops there. Um, but, I mean, you still have to get through all those castle barricades and every single little uh, rat corner that they sat in. And TTU Black, all they have to do is just sit back, wait, and just sit and wait until you can waste all your time. Yep, that is true. And now on a match point here on one of the strongest defensive sites in all of Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, can't ask for much more if you're TTU Black. You just got to uh, win it out. That's all you have to do. Uh, for Turbo, by the way, I mean, we've we've discounted them before in situations where it looked like their back was against the wall. They have, you know, fought back with remarkable vigor. Um, the Fenrir mind going yeah, back I like up. That, one. I like that, one. <laughs> that paid off last time. Do it again. Um, but they, you know, they've come, they fought back with remarkable vigor. Think about that rush round on Skyscraper where yeah. Viterbo just absolutely crushed it. I mean, you can, you can do it again. Uh, you really can if you're sitting on the side of uh, Viterbo. So all of it coming down to this and it's been a long game we are almost at three just uh, almost at three hours about two and a half hours two hours 40 minutes into this so far in Teradus. so these two teams they've been playing for a while uh does it all come down to this i mean we'll see ttu black uh just has to sit here and bunker i said it a couple times throughout this match and before as well that you have to waste a lot of time in the roam and they don't have to do much you're gonna find the first one not a waste of time as a trade's gonna go out lace is gonna fall but epic is gonna find draven in return that's the smoke a player we've been seeing get very active on a character you really shouldn't be getting that active on you don't eggs going hey i'm gonna go ahead and open up the hatches, this is very similar to what we saw from them last time. Lace is dead, so they did lose their smoke early on. Probably not the best thing in the world. Draven Doves on the Ash. Still trying to hold on. A little bit of an attempted Kaid trick. I'm not sure exactly if they got that open or not or what exactly was happening. But here comes Eggs going camp. Just slow walking down the stairs. And a pesky Fenrir mine. The Fnats enabling as per ray here fighting out as well. But he'll fall back into the depths of Freezer. Nobody's quite ready to push down that corridor yet. Only a minute down left for uh, Viterbo. They've got to push through, and they still struggle to take this Freezer player. Even if they can find him, all you've got is Freezer control. They haven't been able to walk anyone down uh, main just yet, trying to push through. They're going to run into a gun of Yojo here. If they can clear off this Capital, this could be a big one. Ray's going to be the first one to find it. Egg's going ham. He's going to take out Joe in that corner. They still got freezer control. Puppy's trying to force his way down. See if he can't find this player. Epic right now looking to see if he can't clear one inside of Laundry and keep his team alive. This guy's taking a little bit of damage. That Fender Mine is finally going down in freezer. And they're gonna start to push through. They're gonna run into a player sitting right there. Epic. Wait, doesn't find it. Eggs is actually gonna find the one on the Skez through the fire. Eggs looking for a second when he finds it, looking for a third, and he finds Where it. Where we go is gonna keep themselves alive. Eggs going ham, going ham, living up to the name yet again. Some of those chalet performances back here exactly when Viterbo needed them the most. Two rounds now to push it to overtime, but Texas Tech, I mean, it's they they just need one. They just need one round. That's all they need here. And they are going to do laundry room again in Teradu. So that's a bold choice, in my opinion. I mean, we'll see if it works out for them. Uh, if you're going to do that, the only change you really need to make is putting a player on T1. Uh, what a lot yeah. of teams like to do is do... Actually, not even one player. You put two. Uh, I mean, they kind of did it for a little bit with Lace. 
uh, where they had him walk up tower stairs, I would prefer yeah, it be literally anyone else. As or just swap can. lace off of that smoke, please. You need him to slow down. That's all you need at the end of the round, really, uh, is just that him being alive for that slowdown. Uh, just swap him, swap him over, like swap him in, I don't know, Yoja. Uh, someone, someone who plays a little bit closer uh, to sight, um, just change their operators and probably go a lot better. Uh, but anyway, back to my original point of they just need to walk uh, two up six power stairs. Just putting that pressure alone, it it makes it a lot harder to, to not waste time. It does, it does. And, uh, you know, the, the the fact that Lace is running around on the smoke, I think, is one of the most pro problematic aspects of this. Like, I mean, I don't want to disparage them because uh, they're... Smoke is, you know, smoke can do whatever smoke needs to. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, like, you're you're not using... Uh, it's a lovely kite spot as well. We're learning so much here today, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I've seen that one before, though, to be fair. But the problem is, you're pulling him out of position, and you're kind of forcing him these aggressive gunfights. He's a th three armor? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure he's a three armor. He is slow, and he is loud, mm -hmm. which, which makes him, as the aggressive sort of point man on a defense, a little bit ineffectual. But I guess one team is sitting at six and four right now at Texas Tech, so maybe they don't yeah. have you smoke better than I do, I guess. I, guess. I don't know. Uh, it is one of those things, though, where I feel like you're always told, you know, don't use your smoke aggressively. Save him. His value increases as the round goes on. Uh, or just bring a mute. Drop the warden. I guess you're bringing a shield. I don't know. It feels weird. I think the, the point of the smoke here isn't even for Lace to have a smoke. It's so that he can play SMG-11. Uh, Maybe. <laughs> that's... There, there's like there's better options there if you if that's really what you're looking for uh that's the only thing that really like falls out to me here uh, with the way they're doing this uh, but i guess it doesn't really matter because they're like you said they're winning i'm not the one playing they are so clearly they're uh looking to see what their decisions uh could be r that are right one thing i've really seen that's been right so far at ATT black is the way that they're playing freezer they've been doing a good job of getting really aggressive when they need to and falling back right after a kill Ray has to pop the phone right there. That gives some critical intel. Ray will fall back. That F knot on the bottom of the freezer stairs continues to be a health hazard for the members of the Viturbo squad. Viturbo now funneling bodies down into freezer. A gunfight there with Ray that Ray walks away from. Ray trying to take that high position. Will drop down and fire some shots, but he can't land it. The drone catches him out. And it's poor Creeper guy who finds TV first. Overcomes the Yin Candela. What can the Jaeger do but really fall back? in that situation a full press here coming from the sides of the turbo three to four two to four now eggs going ham lighting off starling knight gets one more and everything on the back of skez and he is brought down by starling knight and another round in the books here for the turbo as they continue to push towards that overtime they did a really good job of just setting up everywhere i don't think there was a single avenue except for i think tower stairs was like the only place where we didn't see something coming out of iturbo they had two players playing down freezer they had uh two players playing out of uh out of uh, laundry and they had a player walk really late up into bunker i mean it was it was really well executed there's not much you can really do um, except when your individual fights there as TTU. And if you're not winning them, then something like that, that kind of team play, it's very hard to play against. Um, they tried. They uh, definitely shot back, but it really didn't work. Um, I didn't, I, I was kind of weird to see uh, Lace move away from Epic. Uh, every time we've seen them uh, kind of play this bottom basement site, those two have been basically joined at the hip. Uh, so something interesting to see uh, in that last one that they decided to swap up. Indeed. And now you kind of look at the way things are going here for Texas Tech, and you think to yourself, okay, uh, is Texas Tech maybe kind of on the on the ropes all of a sudden? I mean, these are strong defensive sites that Texas Tech has been losing, and they just keep going back to basement. I, I am genuinely surprised that they did not shift this bomb site up like 
fool me twice, exactly. you know, Located shame on you. Fool me three times, shame on me. Like, it's clear that Viturbo has a plan for how they want to go attack this, and it's been working. I mean, it's been working for two rounds now. What makes you think round number three, with pretty much no changes to your lineup except dropping Fenrir, which was one of the most successful parts of the aforementioned lineup, is going to make a difference here? Left before insertion. Well, you know what they say, Corbeck? Third time's Five the charm. <laughs> this sure. Is, if you just well, for keep you. doing it, <laughs> if, is to a bomb. if you just keep doing it, you'll eventually win. I mean, doing the same thing and expecting a different result, it may be the definition of insanity, but it may work. If it works, it's not insane. Yeah, you're right. I mean, that's true. If it, if it works, it works. Uh, it's just, is it going to work? I mean, that's, yeah, okay, oh, third time's a charm. Let's hope. Uh, as Yojo plays hyper aggro there with the MPX, I mean, we're, we won't rule out the the possibility here that TTU Black can just ball out on gun skill and yeah. get all these kills. Um, certainly, it's within their capability to do just that. But they've been turtling on these basement defenses. They really haven't been getting very aggressive at all. I mean, look at the way that Ray has been playing these, right? He, he's going to fall back into Freezer. He's going to hold the same spots because that's where he needs to hold because those are the most effective spots. And uh, Viturbo is well aware of that. Oh, that's cheeky. Nobody there, though. No, no one is there. It's What I like to see a lot of t players do is go to the third floor. Oh, <laughs> he pre-fired the Fenrir thinking it would be there. Uh, but there is no Fenrir this time around. Draven's going to take a little bit of damage, and so is Epic, but no one falling just yet. Draven's going to be able to find his way in, looking to see if he can't clear out anyone who's sitting over in Laundry Side, but there's no one there to look for. Epic is just going to get walked upon, and they've got Freezer control. Oh, this no, the they've got Freezer control. Turbo, as they're going to be walking in, he's going to be putting a Claymore down. You can't. You can't give this huh? up. Skez finding his first kill of the match so far. The Malusi swinging in and reestablishing control of Freezer. They weren't able to capitalize. It's still three to four here, though, with about a minute and ten seconds left. Eggs going ham just walks over a set of boxes and gets a kill. Skez tries to get one more, throws the impact grenade. Skez trapped, running back, forward. Eggs going ham gets that kill. Yojo the only one left alive. Eggs going ham again going ham. And it's well done here, ladies and gentlemen, because we are going to overtime in this match. I we're at overtime, and I said before um, that <laughs> I said before that if we go to overtime, TTU Black is on defense. I don't know if that's a good thing anymore. I really don't. I mean, we had a four-two half on attack for TTU Black, and then a two-four two-four half on second half. So. <laughs> are they going basement okay they're not going basement no they're not they're doing meeting kitchen honestly which is <laughs> which is okay. weird but at this point thing i could say to them <laughs> yeah which is weird but at this point honestly anything's better <laughs> than uh, that damn basement site so uh all right all right well, this is a match ladies and gentlemen if you're a viturbo fan if you're a ttu fan you're probably on the uh edge of your seats uh watching this go down and if you left early you thought that ttu had to sew it up well you are uh sorely mistaken because viturbo has run it back in the most impressive way possible and win or lose here i mean viturbo's got to be proud of how they handled this this has been a wild Ten ride uh and ttu man they have got to uh they have got to arrest this Five free fall in Teridus. they have got to win this match attackers are moving yeah no i mean i mean to be fair both teams have got to win this match if they want to keep going uh but it was it was ttu's game or ttu's uh series to lose they had it up that first map uh seven three yeah, something yeah, like that. 7-2, Whatever. 7-2. Oh, wow, that was even better. 7-2. Uh, a disappointing show line on uh, Skyscraper, and then coming into a map that I said like 40 times should should be known. And I, I, I guess they don't know how to play basement. That, that, uh, that definitely showed, and we'll see if they can play a little bit better on this first floor. 
<sighs> there you go. Already an aggressive approach being taken right here. I genuinely hope they've droned it out because Lace is sitting right here with the gun aimed and it looks like Egg's going ham is, no, he's trying to bait him. Egg's going ham is trying to be sneaky. Those, those eggs are far from over easy. Those are some sneaky eggs. Uh, didn't quite work out though. Um, cause they kind of backed up right there. Epic, Epic's Ray still holding here on the top floor. He's got a fallback position as well. If he needs it, the Hads is open to his fight as the drone does come in, but they know that Epic's Ray is there, but they didn't quite spot him out. Yojo on the low ground here on the Legion. El Puppy Loco with a nasty angle, trying to see if they can pick someone off, but it's Lace up on the top floor who does find eggs going ham. The uh, Jebater was Jebated, I think, in that scenario. Didn't quite think that Lace had gone. The opening into Attic will come, but uh, it might be a little too late here for the side of a turbo because they've lost Draven Dubs as well. Two off the board already for my turbo. They're going to have to find an answer for that soon if they want to do anything. But first thing they're going to have to worry about is this fire. It lasts for about 25 seconds. And there's already 50 seconds left on the board. The off fire is off. They still got to deal with the fire on the below. Thankfully, they didn't wait, and wait until 30 seconds. That would have been very awkward. Um, but they still have to figure out a lot of control in this map. Lace is just going to hold this window jump in. He's going to... Charlie's going to make the call. He's going to look to see if he can't find him. He does! What a shot coming out of Starling. He's going to jump in and see if he can't clear out the rest of these players upstairs. A uh, board creeper guy there now playing on the breach. It's a four to three. I mean, it's still salvageable. El Puppy Loco is in a very dangerous position indeed because I don't think they know that he's here. Skez gets one kill. Skez rotates back, but El Puppy Loco finds it. They've got control of Meeting Hall here. They could get the plant down. The members of TTU need to get back into this. The Yokai coming out. Board creeper guy has the kill on the Yojo. Epic Ray, though, he'll get the next one. And time runs out. Oh, the yokai saves the day in what could have been a potential round loss for TTU. And on to match point we go in round number 14 of the deciding map. And TTU Black is back on attack. Something they did a lot better than their defenses. I mean, it's hard to lose uh, three rounds in a row on basement and. I guess decide to keep going back for whatever reason. But they're back on attack now, and we'll see if they can actually push basement. Um, we got to see it the first time they pulled out that blitz rush. Attackers need to locate and defuse bomb. I'm curious. Can I, can I get a look at the this reinforcement on blue? I want to on that blue ninety. I want to see what they do. I'm I I really hope that they. Even in the corner of their eye, but I really hope that they don't double reinforce that. Stand clear. They need to play it. You just, you, you can't, uh, I said it earlier, you can't just give up control of blue. You give way too much freedom to the attacking team. Uh, and, yep, there it is. <sighs> my head is in my hands right now, perfect. So it's it's the way that they've chosen to play it, honestly. But I mean, you look at the other side of the ball, and TTU is not playing one of their lineups that would take advantage of this. They're generally not. So that's worth pointing out there as well. And as much as we want to bemoan that ceiling, and I, I do agree, sealing that off is a silly thing to do. Um, it, it's it's not a death sentence. It's genuinely not. Some teams I've seen play it that way. It's just not the preferred play. But anyway, here we go. 20 seconds in, and Texas Tech is making some progress. They're droning out. They've got most of the top floor themselves. I don't think any of the members of a turbo are on the roam, but of course, they don't know that, so they've got to be a little bit careful about this. Uh, their caution, not going to be their undoing here, I think, in this circumstance, as it'll be Ray who leads the charge, and he will go upstairs and just check around up there as well. But again, I don't think there are any members here of uh, a turbo on that top floor. There is a cap getting in play, and it's important to remember when things get heated in moments like this in Teradis, captain's value captain's value does go up because you're not being as careful about checking uh your doors and what have you. no true um and one thing i'm seeing out of uh ttu black is a lot of stacking they're gonna be very careful there's two c4s on the board that could be a free double kill if they throw it through a hatch uh if they throw it out of stairs whatever it may be 
and you're nearby, that's going to tra- change the tide of a, of a round. Um, but they've got a minute 36. Hatches are finally getting open. They're on good pace right now. If you black made sure that they've cleared all these roamers, um, and they're going to start their push soon. And we'll see if they can't find their way down these stairs. One minute, 20 seconds down on the board. Ray here on the staircase, ready to start the push. It looks like he was waiting for a go-ahead signal. Smoke canister popped here by Draven Dubs on the E-box hatch there, I think, to slow things down. Board Creeper guy still holding around the vicinity of the B-side bomb chassis. He's looking for an opening. Lace is driven back up the stairs. The smoke grenade's doing a lot of work here for the side of it turbo. Just keeping attackers the attackers the somewhat dropped. displaced. Attackers the fuser the dropped here. on high. That means an aggressive push is in the offing here for the side of TTU Black. What can they make of it? TV pushing down into the freezer. A couple of shots there experimentally. He's looking at the right spot, but there's nobody there. 40 seconds left on the clock. Time is ticking. The first kill comes in at Starling Knight, and he's dropped ace. One of the top gunners here for the side of Texas Tech is down, but the trade comes back. Esquez finds one of the long sight line. Ray gets caught by the smoke grenade, and it's all or nothing now. 20 seconds left here in the attack. TV pushes forward. Egg's going ham, gets caught. TV gets two. El Puppy Loco is down. TV nearly finds a third. The board creeper guy trying to salvage the situation, and he has dropped. 10 seconds left. Draven dubs the only one left alive. Skez on low health here. Nobody has diffuser control. Roll, Skez picks it up. He cannot get the defuse down, and we are going all the way in overtime. You know, I just I had to congratulate them about their about their time usage, didn't I, Gorvik? I had yes. to. I had to say that they were on good track. They are starting their push soon, and then they run out of time. You know, cast of curse is real. Anyone who doesn't believe it. You can watch that round back. <laughs> you can uh, go back to that 130 mark and find <laughs> way to follow exactly, exactly, eggs. Way to follow the script, uh, but find exactly the point where I doomed them to to go to round number 15, <laughs> and that's where we are. We're in the last round here. It's do or die for both teams here. This, if you are haven't been watching, is the quarterfinals. There's no going back after this. Whoever wins this Defenders round continues on. From being diffused by and... At least we're not going to basement. We are going to second floor dorms, and I think that is a good idea. (laughs) From T from TTU Black, I think that is the right choice to make. I could not tell you. I genuinely could not tell you uh, in Teradis who I think is going to win this one. I I don't know. I genuinely don't know. It's any given round could go either way. That seems to be the theme that we've established here. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, it's, left. it's been back and forth all game. Um, we had both halves. Uh, the attackers got four around on their half um, and up until OT. And then it's been one and one. So we'll see if uh, TTU can find this last one or if the turbo is going to be the one continuing on. Throwing out their roam now. They're going to have to find Epic on this first floor sitting inside of meeting hall and they're gonna start it out knowing that he's potentially over there they are and starling knight has been a bit of a demon on the dmr here tonight so that's something to keep in mind i mean it's definitely the preferred firearm uh, of that particular player Something to keep an eye on there. The Doka be obviously a very strong operator in and of themselves. But look at what's happening here. We've seen Draven Dubs on this Ash before, and they've been very rushy on the Ash, and it has paid dividends for the side of Viterbo. TV up here now, checking that long sight line. You've still got two roamers. That's Lace and Ray. They're both on the low ground. Lace has a good fallback position here, has not been cut off. Eggs going ham in the garage, sort of backing up or mirroring the push coming from above. Is Starling Knight tries to swing the corner there with the DMR. Starling Knight now sort of just trapped in limbo here in the entryway. It's going to go ahead and call those phones. Yojo swinging both directions at the top of the stairs, and there's the first kill, and it's a big one. Draven Dubs is down, and with them goes that Ash potentiality. Another one's going to fall as Epic is actually going to find Starling. That's two bodies already off the board for Viterbo. 
And it's not looking great for them in this last round here. They've got to find their way up these armory stairs. And they've also got to clear these players underneath. It doesn't seem like they could do much with no floor holes. But just having that presence underneath, being able to rotate up either sets of stairs, makes it very hard as an attacker. You have to make sure that you can't just give them this kind of freedom. And with only a minute left on the board, they're wasting a lot of time. Another oh, one. Oh, no. going to fall. His lace is going to find board creeper guy. Eggs is going to oh. fall too. And it's all up to puppy here. This is it. It's a 1v5 situation. You're on the last round potentially. Or not even potentially. This is the last round. This is it. Help. Right here. Oh, Help Puppy Loco in trophy. He's got an opportunity for one kill. He misses his shots. He swings. He's looking the wrong place. Lace, of course, swings around and finishes it off. Look at what happens when you don't play aggressive smoke. He'll pick up the win. And Texas Tech Black walks it in and an absolute grind fest of yeah. a match here against their opponents. I mean, what can you say, Teradis? It has been a back and forth struggle across these last two maps, and it goes all the way to the bitter end here on Oregon.